Very welcome to our, we call it digital day. I mean, okay, you are prepared, you know what Zoom is, our Zoom meeting. I mean, okay, for five or six hours, <laughs> let's say how, how it works or let's see how it works. Um, we want to, let's say, substitute not because uh, yeah, the, the um, summer school will happen next year. You got the Doodle link. But something in between, let's say we build a kind of, of bridge in between, uh, we will celebrate here with the people, the professors, the speakers who will meet again next year, hopefully today with their topics, their issues to give you kind of, yeah, let's say uni university program for some hours about yeah, conservation, uh, fortified churches, Romania at all, yeah, at all for us, the opportunity to, yeah, let's say, to, to make something, yeah, because of the corona situation. So it was kind of, uh, yeah, evil or bad thing for us. Yeah, what's to do? Uh, cancel the summer school? No, but what's to do? Okay, the Zoom meeting at the end that will happen today. Um, we are three people, they host um, our today meeting. Myself, Tim Köhler, as a student of the uh, European University um, Heritage uh, Study Program, Professor Salewski will talk to you a bit later, and uh, two other students, uh, Sonja Cardenas and Sebastian Betke, you will see them in some minutes. Uh, at first, I'd like to tell you some things in preparation. Uh, we will record. Um, our meeting today and put it later on YouTube, you know how it works. If you don't want it, I don't know, maybe. So I'm sorry, <laughs> but we have to do it. We like to do it, yeah. Um, to have it in future, maybe next year to see what happened today. Um, so that's what you have to know. Um, if you have questions, technical questions uh, because of content and so on. Okay, next guest is here. Uh -huh. Uh, please use the chat. Yes, Sonja will manage the chat. End of the end of our today's session, we will um, have our, let's say, lab about, yeah, kind of discussion, wrap up. So that's the opportunity, occasion for you to ask to add something. Yeah, better not during the whole program. And in case I said, please use the chat. So we will manage if we can. Um, What's useful to know? Um, mm, as I said, yeah. So I think first the words I had to say, I'm really happy to see you. It, uh, it worked. So we invited you and you are here. That's quite nice. Our first success today. And uh, please excuse if we were in trouble, hopefully not <laughs> with Zoom. Yeah, it's the first time not using Zoom, but uh, with 25 people. Uh, so um, please support us, help us <laughs> we, if we are in trouble. So we try to be professional. Uh, if it works, we will say. Okay, um, maybe some words about myself. Okay, I'm a student, you already know. And of course, I have another life. <laughs> um, so I'm uh, working for museums mainly in project management, creating exhibitions, um, releasing books, mainly focused on local uh, history in Berlin, Brandenburg, uh, Poison, or uh, let's say newer uh, history, mainly focused in Berlin as well. So that's what I'm doing all the day, uh, mainly. And uh, since, more, since about a year, I'm um, studying at the European University in this heritage program. So I see one guy. Thank you very much. Who is it? <laughs> That's not me. Um, so you got the camera and maybe because your audio, uh, who is it? I don't know. Now we are 29 people. Okay. So Zonia, uh, I, maybe the floor is yours. Say something about you, some words and after what's mm -hmm. Sebastian. Also for me, a warm welcome. Um, for me, just a very short introduction. Um, my name is Sonia Cardenas. I'm a restorer of wall paintings and architectural columns. 
And like Tim and Sebastian, I'm a student in the study program of Strategies for European Culture Heritage at the European University of Vienna. And I'm looking forward to an interesting and informative day with you. Hello. Thank you very much. Sebastian. Hello, everybody. <clears throat> uh, I hope you can hear me well. Um, uh, I'm uh, also a student um, and I'm a carpenter uh, original, um, working in a masonry and carpentry for historic buildings and monuments. Um, I entered Romania uh, 20 years ago um, and uh, uh, fall in love in this region and uh, dedicate a part of my life uh, to save uh, um, yeah, the historic built landscape, built heritage of Transylvania. Uh, I had a company for 15 years um, a small crafts company and uh, who is at the moment uh, in uh, resting um, and they joined a little bit the management or the research of uh, cultural heritage and uh, construction uh, restoration projects. <clears throat> so uh, I uh, working now since five years uh, together with a Fortified Church Foundation. I'm responsible for construction sites, for uh, restoration projects in different scale. And um, in Uphold, I arrived 17 years ago and we established here an association. I will tell later some few words about this through the video walk. Um, and this Casa Apold Association um, yeah, uh, running uh, actually this place and restoring it since 15 years. And uh, I'm the chairman of this association. And through this association, uh, we make different educational programs. So this is a other part of my uh, professional work life. Uh, I like to, uh, to teach crafts um, to people who are eager to learn it, uh, traditional crafts. So um, this is uh, a part of uh, summer school also from Apport Heritage Lab, um, because uh, we want to join actually the, uh, the restoration part, the architecture part and the crafts part together uh, in this Apport Heritage Lab. So that's Thank you very me. much. <laughs> Thank you very much for your uh, short introductions to yourself. As you recognize, okay, I'm the guy who tries, let's say at the end now, who will be the moderator today. And um, can you see me? Because I see you uh, still, Sebastian. Uh, do you see me? Okay. I can see you. Okay, wonderful. So, okay, let's say, um, let's do it. Let's start with the program uh, of today. The first uh, point in the program after the, what you called introductory remarks. So we are in time, cool. Um, it's called welcome address. So we got a video welcome address from the Bishop Reinhard Guib. Most of you maybe know him. If not, you will see who it is. Um, the head of, at the end, let's say, uh, Evangelical Church uh, of Augustan Confession in Romania. And uh, a really nice and important partner for our project. And in, in his role, he will talk to us uh, in, a, in a recorded short video message. So I will press the play button and hopefully the sound works well too. Um, just a second. Okay, share monitor. Okay. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. So you should see him. And now you will. Okay. The, the voice is too small. The voice is small. Sonia, too? Does it work or not? No, it doesn't. Does not. Okay. By Church Foundation yep. team. Yeah. Yeah. Dear participants, students, professors, and partners of the Tapold Summer School, dear Fortified Church Foundation team, distinguished guests, it's a great honor and pleasure for the Evangelical Church of Augsburg Confession in Romania to greet you for the Tapold Summer School Digital Day. Thank you very much for your willingness to attend the summer school virtually, unlike planned, and that you dedicate it to the landscape of fortified churches in Transylvania. Due to its historical, architectural, and cultural value, the Transylvanian fortified church landscape rightly belongs to the Romanian as well as to the European, yes, to the world heritage, cultural cultural heritage of UNESCO. The challenge is to do justice to this gift and implicitly the task of preserving, of securing, of repairing, using, and ultimately saving it. That concerns first and foremost the legal owner, our evangelical church in Romania. Until 1989, it was still a manageable task, since the great wave of emigration in 1990, which swept 90% of 100,000 evangelical Germans in Romania with it, the small, hard-working crowd of 10,000 remaining people with a legacy of around 160 fortified churches and another 100 churches and many church buildings and centers like parish house, school, cultural hall, etc. completely is overwhelmed. That is why the Evangelical Church is ready to share the spiritual heritage and responsibility with the Romanian people in the country, as well with the former church members who are now living in Germany, and with the state representations in Romania, in Germany and Europe, experts and professionals, universities and NGOs, as well as friends and partners like you. To achieve this goal, we have established the Fortified Churches Foundation of the Evangelical Church. As a result, this goal gets more visibility at home and abroad, more use thanks to the two patrons, the Romanian and German presidents, more friends and sponsors, more professionalism and efficiency, more conception and impact. I cordially invite you to cooperate with the Fortified Church Foundation to save the unique European cultural heritage in Transylvania. Only together, with you and other partners with expertise, knowledge and skilled work, we can process effectively against the further collapse and loss of this common treasure and we can rescue it. We are counting of you, on you. We also invite you to Transylvania when traveling becomes possible again to get to know these fortified churches and natural landscapes that are worth preserving, to sponsor a fortified church maybe, or to contribute to large and small scale restoration measures on site and to the partnership with the Fortified Church Foundation. You are warmly welcome to us online today and soon to be present. I wish you all a God-blessed and fruitful online day with interesting lectures that make you want more. Stay healthy in body, soul and spirit. Sincerely, your Reinhard Guip, the Bishop of the Evangelical Church of Augsburg Confession in Romania. Thank you very much the address. Now you should see and hear me, yeah? Again, okay. <laughs> um, that was the bishop and much more shorter than we we planned him. That's nice. So um, 
next point on our list will be um, the the speech or the lecture is later. Now, Paul Zalewski, our professor, <laughs> directly from Spobice in Poland or Berlin, I don't know. Oh, I have to give him the authorization for uh, the sound. Good morning, Mr. Zalewski. Now we Good can morning. You. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. I'm uh, right now uh, on the outskirts of Berlin uh, and not in Subice because we have um, uh, a new um, situation on the border and uh, Poland has been declared as a dangerous zone in terms of Corona. This is uh, the overarching problem of this pandemic and I'm very lucky that we that we have the opportunity to meet each other uh, despite of this um, crisis situation. And therefore I would like to express my gratitude to the organizing team, to the Sonia Cadenas, Tim Köhler, and last but not least, Sebastian Betke, our dependence in, in um, Transylvania uh, and strong partner on site. And um, <clears throat> I would like to say you, of course, hello and, and to get you uh, or to say uh, uh, some words about uh, the collaboration and uh, our experiences we, which we collected during the last uh, 10, uh, 10 years of collaboration uh, between the European University uh, Viadrina in Frankfurt under Oder and, um, and the Lutheran Church in Transylvania. The, I have to say from my perspective, uh, from the German perspective that uh, the region itself uh, belongs to the uh, most interesting part of it, part of Europe and um, because of the influence of uh, different cultures it's kind of melting pot I think um, the colleagues uh, who are among us who are from Romania know this subject very well I am just uh, rather talking this to the colleagues from Germany and trying to convince them to the beauty and interesting points of Trans Transylvania um, uh, it's, it's the region is very remote and was 10 years ago um, not uh, something which was very strong rooted in my uh, memory or, or in my consciousness but um, we started a co collaboration with the uh, bishopric administration with uh, the cultural center in Zibiu, the cultural center of the evangelic church and then we organized uh, the first uh, journey to uh, Transylvania, uh, which brought a lot of interesting um, impressions, uh, something which was really striking for someone who comes from Germany. It was this um, uh, richness of um, cultural landscape, uh, about 250 villages in uh, preserved in very uh, authentic condi condition. Uh, mostly uh, bringing a picture of, of villages from the 18th or 19th century. It is something which is absolutely, uh, absolutely fascinating for someone, uh, for a preservationist coming from, uh, from uh, Germany. And also the fortified churches uh, also uh, preserved in, in absolutely uh, unaltered uh, condition. This is also something which is uh, for uh, for us in Germany. It's uh, also not uh, nowhere to be seen. Uh, therefore, um, therefore, it was um, striking and fascinating from the uh, first glance. Of course, the um, fortified churches um, are not uh, are also to be seen in other European countries such as Denmark, southern France. Slovenia, Austria, and Germany as well. But none of these regions has uh, such a um, high number of, of churches uh, as we have it in Transylvania. Um, so we, uh, as I said, we, uh, we made our first um, in, uh, experiences in the time around 2010 and um, 
uh, something which was, of course, uh, very striking. That, uh, this was uh, um, lack of the people, lack of the population, which is the most explication for the bad condition of the, of the churches. Uh, and uh, the, our Romanian colleagues know this uh, uh, situation. Um, in the year 2011, only 11,000 uh, of people uh, declared to belong to the Saxonian group, to the Saxons, which makes only the 5% of population if you compare it with the condition before the Second World War. So it's uh, really um, quite dramatic uh, situation and the explanation for this suffering um, uh, under which um, uh, heritage is uh, currently. Um, despite of the lack of the population and despite of, of all these problems we met during our first journey, uh, people uh, who were very, very engaged, were very friendly and very open-minded. And it was maybe a decisive moment to, um, to say that we will uh, continue this um, co cooperation. And we met uh, we uh, met them um, in the in the bishopric administration as well as on sites directly on sites people who uh, took care for the objects and uh, which was really a moving experience and uh, something which uh, said to us so this is really something which we uh, could maybe foster therefore we had um, we triggered a series of master theses devoted to the problem of, um, of um, Saxonian heritage and uh, oriented also in towards history of arts, but we triggered also one master work who tr tried to, um, uh, to design a kind of courses for ordinary people uh, wanting to, to care for the, for the objects. So this basic, basically help on site, address to the people uh, living uh, in the villages and taking care immediately on site. So it was um, so far not possible to, to realize the plan and to start a kind of academy. And maybe this uh, project is uh, maybe a little uh, part of, uh, of uh, this plan. The most, uh, the bigger challenge occurred in the year 2016, after the collapse of two towers uh, in two separate churches in Rodbach and in Radeln. Uh, maybe uh, the colleagues from Romania know this, uh, this accident. Um, luckily, there was no, uh, no victims among people. And it was a pure coincidence. Uh, the, the accidents occurred in, uh, in a period of time in which the visit of the German president in Romania was in preparation. And it was really um, a, a big chance, very well recognized by, by our colleague from the Fortified uh, Churches Foundation and very well recognized by our colleague from the bishopric administration, a big chance to put uh, this topic of uh, the Saxonian heritage and uh, uh, and churches in danger into the highly profiled agenda, political agenda. And uh, so we did it and we prepared together. So we, I mean the university and the Fortified Churches Foundation, an application uh, addressed uh, to the Federal Office for Media and Culture in Berlin. By the way, this meeting today is also fostered by the same office. Uh, and we had really uh, luck because the um, application uh, was uh, approved. And so uh, on this way, we got in the situation of the program in which, uh, which took all in all three years and um, uh, which was devoted to the uh, diagnostics of the churches in uh, especially bad uh, condition, churches in, in danger or, or uh, the whole ensembles uh, of, of uh, buildings in danger. So we, uh, we got uh, the opportunity to, um, to pay for 20 
uh, surveys on 20 uh, objects in danger, but on top of that, uh, the bishopric administration uh, declared to uh, to take over to take over the, the costs for the uh, next uh, for the further 10 surveys, and on top of that, the uh, Minister of Culture in Bucharest um, also declared to uh, pay for the further 10. Uh, service um, on objects in danger. So we had on all um, the perspective to uh, to make to make the survey of 40 uh, 40 uh, objects, 40 great objects, which is really a singular situation, not only in in Romania, but I think uh, this program with this whole scale is something which is um, uh, rather seldom to be seen in Europe. So we, um, our program uh, com comprised two steps, two levels. The first level was the uh, was the surveys uh, done uh, uh, directly on site by two renowned uh, Romanian uh, engineering uh, offices. The uh, program itself was hosted at the Viadrina University because we were officially in Germany uh, the someone who prepared this uh, this application and um, uh, so the first level it was the uh, survey directly on site and then the second level was a kind of supervision um, done by Viadrina together with one uh, uh, renowned uh, office for architecture engineering and heritage preservation based in Germany and so the supervision took place on site. So we uh, made all in all uh, three journeys uh, visiting uh, most dangerous objects and uh, looking exactly for the damages and the sources of the damages. And um, so we can ask ourselves, what was the job good for? And um, there may be two reasons uh, why it was um, very important in the case of danger uh, churches. First of all, the church administration itself uh, has the opportunity to prioritize the, the steps or the measures and uh, can say very clearly uh, which objects um, uh, need to be secured uh, or renovated first. The second uh, uh, reason for or second out positive outcome of the project was um, uh, related to the, let's say, uh, lawyer or bureaucratic practice, because according to the law, you have to have an approved documentation, uh, so to say, a professional certificate with a stamp in order to get the permission to start uh, the, uh, the construction works. Um, um, uh, so in order to 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 say uh, to 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 do anything with this object this is uh, also the same in germany you you have to have permission but for this permission uh, uh, something is required which um, is a guarantee of your knowledge about the problems uh, on site um, so looking at the summarized outcome of the project, we can say that the common problem of all these abandoned churches is the water. The rain coming through the gates in the roofs, of course, uh, but also the water coming from below, from the ground. We have to keep in mind that uh, in a typical case, uh, the area around the church is a kind of pot really closed pot separated from outside by the massive defense walls. In many cases, the level of courtyards between the church and the walls grew up over centuries. Um, and so you have the situation uh, that, um, that the uh, level of the exterior is in many cases significantly higher than the level of the pavement in the interior. So this is a kind of uh, dramatic difference of levels uh, between exterior and interior. And the consequence of this is that the walls of the church buildings uh, had um, become wet over time. There's a lot of humidity in the, in the walls. 
and uh, which um, causes the crystallization of salt in the interior and the destruction of the mortar and the destruction of the plaster in the interior of, of the churches. Uh, so when the situation like this lasts over many years, the damage can be, of course, serious. But on the other side, and this is also very interesting to know, you know, of course, all these um, similar situations, but it needs to be proved directly on site. Um, the check Import, the, the check of the, um, of the damage pictures is very important because, um, because the traces of the visual dis destruction uh, are not in every case urgent and there are of course situations coming, uh, coming from the past. Let's say the, the cracks uh, visible on the surface of the wall uh, uh, are maybe inactive. They uh, occurred maybe in the past, maybe 200 years ago. It, kind of, it was a kind of shift of uh, different uh, um, sections of the wall, but this, uh, the, the tensions within the wall is maybe uh, not active anymore. Uh, this is the second reason for checking exactly for the, um, uh, for, for the, uh, reasons for, for um, occur, occurring uh, some, some uh, uh, picture or signs of, of uh, destruction. So th this was uh, uh, in a nutshell the um, summary of what we, uh, what we uh, could see on the, on, this, on the site in many cases. Of course, we, um, we uh, are we ask ourselves what are the chances and the prospects for the for the churches and we owe uh, a kind of uh, answer to the uh, to the audience or to the uh, people who look uh, at us as preservationists and uh, we i think I'm very optimistic, I'm rather optimistic uh, in long term about the development of the Transylvania as a region uh, who is attractive from the touristic point of view. Uh, of course, we have uh, now, right now, the uh, crisis situation and pandemic and uh, this uh, tragic situation uh, affects not only Transylvania, but also the premium tourist, uh, tourism regions in Europe, uh, like Spain, Italy, and France. All the regions uh, have terrible problems uh, with, um, to develop the, uh, or to continue the tourism business. But um, one day, if the crisis is over, I, I am rather i'm not a pessimist so let's say so uh, in terms of the development of the region because um, the region uh, has really a lot of uh, advantage uh, advantages making it very attra attractive so let's say in the tourism uh, in the tourism uh, theory there are um, two categories of uh, of what is attractive. There is a kind of, um, let's say, primary destinations, which are uh, related to the um, formations of nature, like a sea coast or, or mountains. Uh, and the um, secondary reason for making, for finding something interesting, so a region interesting is the cultural heritage. And uh, Transylvania has uh, the both advantages. So uh, it is, it is a question, of course, of uh, good marketing of the region to the outside of the uh, in, in Europe, and um, and the question of of uh, good management of uh, uh, in the so in the country itself. It's of course not so uh, easy because of the less interest and less responsibility which cannot uh, e be easily generated among different uh, cultures and different group of, uh, of population on site. So we, uh, but I think it, it could be interesting for, uh, for um, tourism uh, within the middle part of Europe and could uh, also attract uh, population from other countries uh, while we use all, um, um, 
possible uh, marketing instruments via internet and so on. So uh, this is my uh, personal view of, uh, of the situation and uh, I wish you an interesting um, day and um, interesting findings. And I think the most interesting th um, um, re uh, conclusions can be generated in this um, uh, in meetings like this, uh, which are created in a very inter interdisciplinary way. So I believe that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you very much, <laughs> Mr. Zalewski, not from Svobice, but from Berlin, more or less uh, Brandenburg. Uh, thank you very much uh, for, for your words. And the um, yeah, it was much more than a small introduction. The introduction in some different points, I think, um, all around this issue of um, fortified churches in Romania in comparison to the situation in whole Europe. I think uh, it's quite interesting. Are we talking about uh, preservation? Are we are talking about uh, marketing different aspects, they could be really useful to, to focus, to understand how to handle um, the situation with monuments that nobody needs, uh, to say it hardly, <laughs> yes, and uh, how to develop um, um, the whole landscape um, in Transylvania of, of heritage. Um, okay, I'd like to add with the um, other uh, speakers, let's say, um, so we are quite good in time and we have a list of uh, people um, they will hold their, their speeches, their lectures um, next hours. So um, I'd like to please uh, Ramona Lachko David, David, I don't know, David, uh, say something about yourself. Um, so we will meet you again later, but uh, I'd like to start with you. Say something about you, your work, who are you? Okay. Warte mal, Ramona, wir können dich noch nicht hören. Just a second. Wait a minute. Okay. Just a second. Yes. Now. No. Now it's fine. Okay, now? Can you hear me? Great. Yes, now. Okay, great. <laughs> So again, um, uh, as you well know, Sebastian is also part, uh, part of our team, but I have now the, uh, the chance to, to present uh, the foundation uh, in this uh, heritage lab. And uh, well, I'm, uh, I've been working at, uh, with international organizations abroad and uh, since last year I'm working with the Fortified Churches uh, Foundation. And uh, together with uh, my colleagues, uh, Ruth Ishran, who is also here on the call, and uh, Andrea Manastirian and uh, Kati, we are putting together this uh, uh, tremendous uh, challenge uh, for, for us in, in, uh, at this stage, an adaptive reuse program for the Fortified Churches. But I'm not going to enter now into details. As Tim said, I will have the chance to, to talk to you later about uh, this topic. Thank you. Thank you very much for your quite short introduction. Um, we will meet you again, as you said. Okay, so uh, next, uh, Mechthild Noel Minor, please uh, introduce yourself. I Just a second for the sound, I have to authorize. Uh, now you should be able to talk to us. Yeah? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. So hello to everybody. I'm Mechthed Neumino from the uh, State Monument Service Agency of the Land Brandenburg. So that's the uh, eastern, uh, in the eastern part of Germany. And uh, in Germany, you have a twofold uh, system of uh, um, monument service uh, protection. We have monument service, state monument uh, protection offices. And I am from the uh, service agency. That means we are making conservation plans. We uh, give consult to owners um, and to other professionals and to state institutions about the uh, monument uh, protection. We are recording. Um, and uh, later in my short lecture, I will give you some insights into our work. I'm personally 
a conservatory store of mural painting and architectural surfaces. And I have been working uh, for about 10 years as freelance conservatory store before I got into the institution and I'm now the head of the conservation restoration section of our institution. So, and I'm also greeting you from the, uh, the conservator, the head conservator of the Land Brandenburg, Thomas Drachenberg, Professor Thomas Drachenberg, who could not join this meeting today. Thank you. And I'm looking forward to this really good uh, opportunity to know each other and to focus on our future uh, summer school in next year. I hope that it will take place on the real place next year. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, that's maybe an uh, additional point to, to, to meet. Yeah. So yeah. we proposed the, the, um, the whole summer school to next year, but uh, most of people don't know each other. So that's the opportunity to, to get an impression, yeah, let's say, or to, to see the faces, uh -huh. <laughs> who's here yeah, and, and, and who's involved. And I, yeah. yeah. And I think also we can then uh, capture what is needed uh, and what we can bring uh, and what we can contribute to uh, this um, opportunity uh, to, to be together on the place next year. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Livio Gligor, please introduce yourself and your work. Um, Mr. Gligor, I already seen you on the list or not, I don't know. Okay. Uh, so yeah, he, he's here. Okay, thank you. Hello everybody. I'm very glad to meet everybody in also in these conditions. Uh, short presentation, I'm working in the University of Architecture in Minku. I have been working since 30 years and now, uh, or some years ago, I concentrated on the School of Architecture in Sibiu, uh, of which I will be talking today. And I'm freelance architect also and involved in uh, conservation of uh, old buildings, not only historical uh, monuments, but uh, I like old buildings and old materials, but also new materials. So I'm very glad to hear everybody today. And uh, of course, my presentation, just to prepare a little bit for it, uh, all of you, it will, um, it will try to raise uh, much more your interest to, to be here in Transylvania. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your short introduction. Um, Mr. Rauer, I've seen you. Ah, okay, just a second. I have to authorize your audio. Now you can talk if you want. <laughs> Hello, good morning, everybody. Um, from Potsdam. Um, my name is Jan Rauer. I'm a restorer for war painting and uh, architectural paint. And um, I am um, worked like for 25 years um, as a freelance uh, restorer conservator in uh, Berlin, Brandenburg and uh, neighboring regions. Um, I had um, uh, the lucky experience to um, um, travel to, to Romania and to uh, make friends with um, people from there and um, to get involved in um, all this um, uh, like um, a marvelous society of people uh, who are, are um, engaged and devoted to the um, preservation of the um, monuments um, there, especially fortified churches. And um, so we had um, um, now I uh, for um, four years now I'm um, teaching um, uh, the um, conservation of war paintings and um, architectural paint at the uh, Fachhochschule Potsdam. And um, so we started in my very first year. We started with an um, 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 
was a trip uh, in, in summer with students uh, to um, Transylvania too. So that was um, like a, a very short um, introduction um, to my person. And um, I hope you have a very interesting and uh, fruitful uh, meeting um, today. And I hope very much that we, we will be able um, to meet personally um, all together next year in uh, Siebenbürgen. Thank you. Thank you very much for your introduction. Um, Mr. Tellman, Daniel, Professor Daniel Tellman, please, just a second. Yeah. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Daniel Tellman, and I'm talking to you from Timisoara. That's in the western part of the country in Romania, where I am an architect uh since almost 20 years and uh for the last eight years i am an uh, associate professor at the uh, faculty of uh, urban studies and architecture here in in town i'm mainly involved in um, in the the, the uh, designing uh, uh practice uh, atelier in in the school and also a coordinator for uh, a diploma uh, works in the heritage unit of the school, focusing on the subunit of rural landscape. Uh, with our students, I'm uh, one of the coordinators of the summer schools in, uh, in, in uh, Transylvania, which together with different associations, uh, our school develops, uh, focusing on uh, rural landscape and traditional architecture, uh, mainly in the Saxon heritage area. I, uh, as a Transylvanian Saxon myself, I'm uh, uh, very interested in the, in the topics uh, regarding fortified churches. And I'm very, very glad to be part of this uh, meeting and uh, of this summer school. In the, in the later uh, hours in my presentation, I will show you three different approaches made with uh, uh, three different students uh, upon uh, fortified churches in the, in the uh, Saxon area. So I'm very glad to see new faces here. I am glad to see students of mine uh, joined in the meeting and also uh, familiar faces. Thank you. Thank you very much for your introduction yourself. Um, see you later again in our today program. Um, on the list as well is, okay, instead of Olaf Hood, his colleague, Mr. Gressig from Coburg. I have seen him on my list. I don't know if he is here or not. Uh-huh, maybe not. That's quite interesting because you have the presentation from Ola Food. Aha, uh -huh, but I have, as I remember, here he is. Uh, mm -hmm. Mr. Gressig, can you hear me? Because I see your picture, but not. Uh, ah. Yes. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Gerhard Gressig, um, but um, I will show you uh, after the introduction. Um, some uh, uh, a short uh, introduction to the uh, SFM, uh, like the program. And now uh, we will see uh, Sonia has a uh, um, PowerPoint from Ola Food and will starting now. Not now, no. not now, but later, later. Is that oh, just, later. Okay. That's just the introduction. Um, we have you. Uh, in two hours. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 okay. Just to to meet you to see your face. Okay. You are uh, our man from Coburg. Yes. Today, if uh, maybe if there's some some question, especially um, for you in the chat or something like that, quite good to know that you are here. Okay. okay. 
Um, then, uh, in the list of our partners, um, that's it. But we have a speaker at the end, a video walk from Mobile. And as I recognize, Victoria Luft is already here. So um, talk to us and say something. Hello, good morning, everybody. Yeah, um, I'm Victoria Luft. I'm a landscape architect and city planner. I moved to Transylvania one year ago. And um, since 2015, I have an association um, that is taking care of a fortified church in a village called Movile or Honatüschen, which is also close to Apold. Um, yeah, we'll try to um, introduce you to this um, jewel a bit later and tell you a bit more. Um, not with a video work, unfortunately, because it doesn't really work, but with a video and I will tell you some things about it. Okay. Thank you very much for introducing yourself. So as you can, can recognize or you see, uh, we have a straight and quite interesting selection of people in our, let's say, whole Upward Heritage Lab program and um, especially our ah, next guest today. Um, I mean, the opportunity to, to ask, to add, to, to, to um, talk with us later. Uh, so note your question or what you want to add, please. And um, let's see how we bring it all together. But quite nice opportunity to meet us, to see the faces. I think that's um, what, what will happen today. Yes. And um, um, use your chance. Okay. Now, as I recognize, um, we are really fast and quite good in time. Um, I ask you, uh, what do you think? Um, uh, should we have a break? Maybe 10 minutes. So, because um, then we will start with the presentation at first, Sebastian Bietke um, about uh, Transylvanian sex and fortified churches, past, present, and future. That's the title of his presentation. Um, quarter past 10, I think we can start earlier, but maybe in, in 10 minutes, 10.5 would be okay for you. I think. Um, your audio <laughs> is um, mm -hmm. so you could talk. Is it okay? So I get some thumbs up from yes, it's okay. Sonia. Okay, okay. Then meet again here in ten minutes. Yes, and take a coffee, walk around, and then <laughs> meet again here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I see many faces. And we are about 30 people. Cool. Hopefully everybody got some coffee and the opportunity to have a short walk and to relax after one hour sitting in a chair that we can start with our or the presentations of our, because I'm not a presenter, but the presentations of our Speakers, um, following the lecture program, first step, first presentation starts with Sebastian Bietke. And uh, okay, something is happening here. Oh, we have some new guests. No, okay. Um, so, because we are so good in time, I can give you the opportunity if there are some questions you can't wait till the end so maybe let's have three or five minutes for one or two questions i think it would be a, a chance to ask or to add something if you want to say something then uh um can do it now <laughs> if not i mean okay some misunderstandings, something so so unclear. The introductions, who these people are, why we are here today, <laughs> should be <laughs> okay. Uh, I gave all of you the opportunity to ask. I think technically or okay. So uh -huh. I'm fighting against Zoom a bit, but we become better. Okay, then. I would say the floor is yours, Sebastian. 
Um, Transylvanian Saxon fortified churches, past, present, and future. I mean, okay, it sounds great. <laughs> it's to our time. <laughs> program, of course. You you are the starter of our lecture yeah. day, and uh, we met you already. You introduced yourself as a part of our organizer team, but now you're talking or speaking as uh, the head or speaker of the association CAS Abort. Maybe at first you can say something about this association and then give us your presentation. The floor is yours. Okay, hello everyone again. Uh, yes, um, the, yeah, I will tell you about Casa Aporta Station later through the video walk. Um, this is an association, one of the first one who took um, together with the German association on the beginning, um, the, took over the fortified church of Apold in a contract. Um, I think it was one of the first one who, like a NGO who take care of the Apold church, uh, of a fortified church. Um, and uh, as we know, the, the evangelic church, uh, uh, it's, um, the Saxon, uh, they left this country, but uh, the fortified churches are still, they believe that it's still their own and their, the, the process of uh, sharing, caring, uh, it's a, a um, yeah, slowly, slowly process. So, um, uh, so 15 years ago we started and we are probably not on the end, so. Um, okay. Um, I will make a roughly um, um, run uh, to the history of fortified churches, uh, to the present situation, and uh, give also maybe some hope uh, to the uh, uh, to the future. So, um, because we all and uh, my colleagues from the Thirty Third Church Foundation, and probably also many others thinking also about the future of the fortified churches, uh, what to do it with them, uh, how to save them, uh, and how to uh, passing them on the next generation. So uh, I will sharing my screen. Can you see it? Yes, I see it. I'm okay. Yeah. I will make uh, the big one. Oh. Okay. So, I I just heard yes. a voice. Is somebody in in trouble or can't can't see? It's not able to see. No. Okay, then I think a microphone was just on. I will switch off mine as well. Okay, please. Okay. Yes. So now I. I speaking uh, uh, in the name of uh, Casa Apollo Association, but uh, of course uh, it's influenced of the from the fortified my work by the fortified church foundation since five years, my work as a as a castle keeper uh, of the Apollo church, and my work as a craftsman uh, uh, in this region for fifteen years. So um, I have. Uh, different position, I had different position that I have, and uh, all this come always together. And the key point, of course, uh, of my work are the fortified churches. And um, so I will make a roughly, uh, I go roughly to the history uh, because uh, it's known for many of you. So you know where it's Transylvania. Um, Ah, one question. Can you see my uh, my mouse cursor? Cursor. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Visible. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Okay. So um, we're talking about, of course, about Romania and especially about uh, uh, this, re this Transylvanian region. So the south southern Transylvania part, this lying something like here. Uh, it's considered from time to time that Transylvania is also much bigger, but the historic part, it's actually between the East Carpathian, South Carpathian and this uh, West Carpathian or the Apusen uh, mountains. And from this big part, 
um, if a church landscape uh, are in this more corner part. So um, here the Saxon was called uh, from the Hungarian king in the 12th century, 11th century, uh, to settle down, um, to cultivate the land and to protecting, of course, the land uh, against um, other groups. So here we have uh, the region, these are the German, now the German names. Um, and in, in the region of Bistritz, there are the population who come a little bit later and has other history. So there are also evangelic Protestant churches, but uh, it's fortificated. So the region of fortification of churches are here in the south part. Uh, Uphold, just for you that you know that you can order a little bit upward because we're talking here also a little bit about Uphold. Um, it's um, between Sibiu and Sigishara, um, mostly in the middle of uh, the settlement uh, on, the, on the side river of um, Tanawa Mare or Große Kockel, it's called. Uh, on the beginning, um, they had the villages had churches um, from stones, but they was not fortificated. Um, so this was not that from the beginning they make a fortification church. Um, they had probably uh, <coughs> in different regions this called like Bauernburgen or Farma, farmer's castle, um, which were shared from different villages. Uh, in the case of uh, needs and emergency. Um, still exist few of them. Uh, this is Rishnov. Um, and, um, but the system uh, for protecting was not so effective um, because the way was mostly up in the hill or in the mountains. Uh, so they have to first go there. And the second, uh, I think the responsibility uh, between the villages was not so clear. Um, so the system of fortified churches uh, was more practical for this very small little community. Uh, and they can easily, uh, the whole village can easily enter the fortified church and rich in time. The short um, um, development uh, stages from the fortified churches uh, from Mr. Fabini, who make uh, um, actually the, the, the big book uh, about fortified churches in the 90s. Um, the, the paintings are from Mr. from the architect Flaps from 1930s, I think. So the first fortification <coughs> was probably um, not on the church, but not around the church, uh, when in the 13th century, when the Mongols attack uh, uh, also East Western Europe, especially Transylvania, um, so the population uh, was um, uh, um, get less uh, on two thirds of the people, and afterwards the the new settlements, the very fresh new settlements, they start to uh, build a, at least a, a ring wall from wood. Uh, maybe later also from stones. And also adding to this Romanic Basilica, maybe some towers, uh, like a kind of uh, a livable tower or a Bergfried um, for protecting. Um, we're not talking yet about a fortified church in this time because the church building himself was not changed. So it was uh, not has a lot of function for fortification, uh, for, for defending. This come in the um, 15th century. So in the late 14th century, the Osmanic Empire reached to the mountains and uh, wants to enter Transylvania and did this. And after some time, the, the Hungarian king allowed the Saxons uh, to build, to fortificate the churches. So in this uh, 1450 to 1550, um, the, mostly in all villages was a, 
long-term construction site uh, over generation. So they get they had to pay less taxes uh, they had to the king, and um, and they are, of course had interest to saving their own lives. So the idea was that the whole village enter the fortified churches and can survive there for a kind of period time. Uh, historians have different opinions. Some people said that there uh, was living permanently uh, over many years inside of the church. Uh, other people said they had a settlement outside and just in the case of uh, emergency, they enter the churches. This has to be not clear. Um, this is the upper church, uh, how it's um, maybe from Mr. Fabini, maybe supposed it was looked once time. Um, here, I just explain you shortly um, that the rule of this whole ensemble was not just uh, the fortification. It was actually um, a village center, a small town in a, in a town or a small village in a village. Um, Beside the church and the church service, there was living the priest who had um, a special function, who was a leader of a community. Uh, and he had a, mostly a special house who was also integrated uh, like a priest house uh, in, a, in, a, in a tower or in a building. Um, in Upward, we had here the, the mill, um, a hand mill and two storehouses. This building was before a tower and was a school tower. The Saxon had a very early school system in the 15th century already. And uh, here was a building. This was then in the 16th century coming to be the, the town hall, uh, the tower uh, where actually um, yeah, the mayor sitting and, and uh, take care of the, uh, of the village. The rest of buildings are site buildings for storing and uh, yes, uh, for uh, defending. On the beginning, there was different churches. Also, this is a, um, there was also different leadership in the village. A uh, few families uh, who called Gräfen tried to get um, a better position in the village community, in the young village community. So they had, they had, um, also the financial background and they're building uh, their own uh, church or a fortified church or their own uh, castle. Uh, the system was not long um, uh, working. Uh, the community was much stronger and the noble families, uh, Gräfen who called, uh, disappear in the 15th century in most of the villages. Uh, so here are a few pictures from uh, fortified churches from the region. So we have also UNESCO World Heritage Churches. This is Viskri, Deutsch Weisskrieg, who is uh, listed also on the UNESCO World Heritage and uh, has every, every um, fortified church is unique and have a different uh, style and a different um, craftsmanship. Um, the reason for this is because um, First, the fortified churches was not built up in, in a short period or in a, in a epoch. They was built up over 300, 400 years. And, uh, and it was a community project. So uh, it was not um, 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 a owner of a family owned this place, and then it was a, the village community, the evangelic or before the Catholic community uh, was the owner of this place. And there um, had, of course, different opinion, different craftsmen, different people and everybody adding something. They had a kind of concept, they had a kind of um, master on the ground, which, uh, which uh, leading maybe the construction site. But you see in many villages that there are different uh, craftsmanship on the place. So they took what they had. And uh, if they had a good carpenter, uh, they then you see the wooden work, it's much more uh, better quality. Uh, and in other villages, they had a good uh, mason, a stone mason. This is a, a beer tem, also 
uh, World Heritage, and Biltem is um, uh, was also over 300 years the seat of the bishop. So it it was special protected with three ring walls, what is very seldom, and uh, uh, had a special fend defending system. Also the maximum of, of defending system what a village or a small town can have. Um, about the population, I just have to tell you that um, the Saxon was from the beginning uh, free people. So they had their own special rights uh, to settle down and uh, had completely autonomy. But not all Saxon. Um, this was like a kind of accident sometimes, sometimes uh, from the history. Uh, you see, this is a map from 1910 um, um, about the church counties uh, of Transylvania. Uh, now we have just five, but in this time there was different church counties. Um, you see here between the, the white uh, spots um, in this uh, Saxon area. And here there was set in also Saxons, partly, and Romanians. But there was not free people. Uh, they get um, uh, just free in the 19th century. And um, uh, the Saxon, the village belongs to some noble Hungarian family. And in this village, we don't find fortified churches uh, because they was not allowed to build up fortified churches. It was just for the free people, free Saxon people. And uh, the Saxon has also history. This is um, um, a small picture um, about this uh, sword from Dras, from Drauschen, um, who disappear. It's, um, uh, it's, um, it's a symbol of, of the Saxon uh, community who was uh, brought from village to village. This is a legend. Uh, in the case of uh, war, like if the Saxon has to join the Hungarian king to go to war, so they are, uh, uh, bring this sword from village to village uh, to uh, bring people together. The Saxon community um, <clears throat> was a kind of very strong community, so they survived this time, this over 500 years, uh, in a foreign country or in, in, in uh, this autonomy uh, because they are keeping the community over the single person. So they had very strong rules uh, what they can do and what was allowed. And if you're not following the rules, you are out of a community. Uh, but this, this kind of rules had also um, the opportunity there was carrying of the fortified churches uh, uh, um, by their own. So they, are, they are didn't expect from outside for help. So they maintain, even after the 18th century, when the function of the fortified churches was not any more needed, there was carrying of the fortified churches. And this is a reason why we have so huge uh, uh, quantity of, of fortified churches. Um, yeah, um, the general population in Romania, here it's now all together, so we had also um, other um, ethnic groups from Germany. Uh, of course, uh, during the 20th century, uh, falling down with emigration and uh, during this uh, uh, two world wars, so now, uh, like Mr. Levski taught already, we have um, around 100, now we have around 60,000 Germans in Romania and uh, 10,000 Saxon uh, in, in the Southern Transylvania region, um, most of them living in towns. So the situation is that um, in, uh, in the villages uh, living uh, uh, mostly no Saxon and uh, if so, then are just few and in a uh, older age. And we have actually in most of the villages, we don't have the 
original or the old um, um, community who take care of the fortified churches. And we call it so diaspora because these are uh, communities with under mem uh, with members under 20 people, but uh, they cannot maintain the fortified churches. Um, all together, some numbers uh, we have um, in the uh, Evangelic Church has around 266 church buildings, 164 fortified churches. Um, uh, additional to this are, of course, the uh, parish house, uh, schools, culture halls, who also belongs to the uh, Evangelic Church. And um, like I told you already, seven or uh, yeah, six uh, evangelic churches and one Catholic churches are uh, UNESCO World Heritage uh, as an example for the whole region. Uh, in Romania, we have two categories of um, uh, protection after the law. Uh, one, it's, uh, it's um, category A, it's from national uh, significance, and B, it's from regional significance. Um, this groups um, and this uh, for fortified churches uh, was made in the 70s uh, or 60s without any red line. So we have fortified churches who are uh, uh, under protecting B and R. Um, and um, this was made just um, on, the, on the table in Bucharest uh, without any um, 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 plan. Or research. Uh, this is a small map from these churches in this region, fortified churches. Um, we have uh, here this called so sex and tree angle between Sibiu, Sigishora, and Brashov. This is in here down. And uh, uh, yes, like I told you, most of them uh, are, are without evangelic community and without. Uh, using uh, the fortified churches or the church himself for uh, religious or for church service. Here it's a, um, here it's a, um, um, after my very subjective but um, statistic uh, of um, the information from the Evangelic Church, but also from the work of the Fortified Church Foundation and from me. Um, we have um, a different kind of Fortified Churches. Um, not all churches are the same. Uh, of course, a big part, and this is a, a, a nice one, what Mr. Levski also already told, we have Fortified Churches who are like one third of the Fortified Churches are in a high uh, original um, construction substance uh, um, survived the time, uh, not damaged, it, uh, uh, also not um, changed, not uh, collapsed, not take it down, or uh, um, in in any kind of way. Um, we have uh, another, yeah, like a quarter of churches who was partly changed. So uh, the first the first things what. Um, the Saxon community did in the 19th century, uh, they um, didn't take care anymore about the fortification uh, elements, like uh, defending platforms um, or the, um, even towers. Um, so this are the, was the first one what they take down or they changed the roofs uh, in, a, in a village or a modern style. Uh, we have also um, simple churches like who was not fortificated, but also are medieval. And uh, of course, new churches uh, and um, churches um, uh, from the towns. The status of uh, the Transylvanian Saxon fortified churches or the churches um, um, looks not so good. Um, after um, a very roughly um, uh, survey, we have around one third of uh, the fortified churches are in danger. Uh, a danger means they will not collapsing uh, from one night to another night, but there will um, 
if if we not acting now in the next few years there would collapsing or there would partly uh, be damaged because nobody uh, take care um we have um yeah one third, one uh, a quarter and um, another quarter like um, maintained and not maintained so if you have a old building even he is not restored or conservated in the best way, but it's maintained, uh, then uh, it's still hope that in 10 years we can uh, restoring it. But uh, if you don't maintain it, then it's a question of time that uh, it's coming in the last uh, category. But it's also hope uh, uh, every year, a few church projects get uh, um, um, realized by different uh, uh, stakeholders from the 45 Church Foundation, from the church himself, uh, from local initiatives. So uh, this number probably also increasing. Um, we have a unique um, uh, substance, uh, uh, like uh, what we not find uh, anywhere in Europe. So. Uh, the villages uh, are also um, still preserved, and but also the fortified churches. We have still um, uh, a lot of elements which are uh, not changed, and uh, here we have special types of roofs. Um, this is a swallow, uh, a swallow tile roof tile, and this is um, um, a plate like a um, roof tile. We have uh, a huge historic uh, uh, attic or a roof uh, construction, historic roof construction uh, with a really high craftsmanship. We finding on mostly every year or in churches uh, elements uh, of historic elements of uh, wall paintings of uh, uh, of of wood, uh, special wood, um, um, uh, like here also stone and glass. Um, yeah, here are the wall paintings, um, which are not discovered yet. And um, often it's not uh, time for uh, much research because uh, the eminent uh, uh, saving the churches with emergency measures um, um, are the priority. Uh, we have also immaterial uh, culture heritage in the churches. Uh, these are the special altar uh, from medieval time, movable altar. Uh, here it's the highest den density uh, in Europe uh, with this kind of altar. Uh, we have an organ landscape, uh, clocks, belts. Yes, and um, of course we have uh, damages. Um, now I passed on on the uh, on the other part. Um, uh, if nobody care of a church, then uh, it's a question of time until we um, uh, uh, it's falling apart. So the the falling down of the towers was mentioned already. Um, sometimes are small damages uh, which stays um, over some years and creating fast big damages. And uh, of course, the roofs are the first ones. And uh, the most thing is uh, to to have uh, maintaining the buildings. Uh, uh, even if if the buildings are in a bad shape, you can maintaining the building and uh, uh, keep uh, this building for a few years. Uh, also, one threat. It's uh, the uh, renovation projects. I call it now renovation projects because it has nothing to do with restoration or conservation. Uh, in the last 20, 30 years was made even in an official way, restoration projects uh, signed from the culture uh, ministry and um, uh, stemmed from architects uh, um, uh, for restoration. Um, one example is this uh, Draushen church, who was uh, with, with many breaks restored or 
renovated over the last 20 years. Um, uh, here it's everything concrete. Um, they're, 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 they're put in the gaps concrete. They're using uh, modern tiles, fabric tiles. Uh, they consolidate this, this uh, huge concrete uh, uh, um, walls. Uh, and this tower, it's mostly rebuilt, but uh, it's also uh, unexpected when you enter. Uh, it looks like a similar, like an um, old tower, but if you enter, you, you find um, a concrete, um, um, yeah, cave um, from beginning, from up Sebastian. to Yeah. I don't want to interrupt you, honestly, we but uh, we, right. we, are, we are not in time anymore, uh, so we are in delay. So uh, if you just need uh, one minute, it is okay. Uh, if not, maybe you can uh, choose yeah. your next um, opportunity um, after the next um, 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 presentation. I, I, I don't know how much okay. time you need still. One give minute? Me, no, give me three, four minutes, okay? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, okay. Um, so... Um, I just when I uh, switch a little bit faster. So we have here um, different um, uh, difficulties, opportunities, but also challenges. So we have missing of traditional uh, uh, or the in community who take care of it. So we need actually new communities. The castle keepers are uh, uh, make take care voluntary of the fortified church, but have no actually no rules and no responsibility. We have uh, by the local authorities a lack of uh, uh, of know-how and understanding, and um, we have uh, of course lack of finance and people uh, uh, in the place. Um, and sometimes I see that uh, it's a missing uh, lack of vision or it's a kind of resignation in this region. Uh, what to do with the fortified churches? Uh, for this, I uh, say, let's say, make few key points for the future. Um, we have to save it as fast as possible, how much is possible uh, for this uh, danger heritage. And even if it means in five years, we have to save it again. But uh, from the beginning, you have to start like this. But in the same time, we have to create and support local initiatives. Uh, who are willing to take care of the fortified churches. So it has to be a little bit open to this kind of groups, new groups. Uh, education plays a big role. Uh, we have to uh, involving or uh, uh, bring people to the, to the churches and um, to uh, um, uh, that they understand, uh, the local people that they understand what they have on the place. Um, and of course, this place has to be open. Uh, at the moment, it's a, like a white uh, spot in the middle of a village, and it has to be open for uh, for new ideas, for for locals, for visitors are sometimes open. So um, first, we have to make research uh, what we have. We have to make uh, crafts courses because it's a lack of craftsmen here, and uh, the slowly the craftsmanship dying also here in Romania, and especially the conservation craftsmanship. So here are um, courses what the church, Fortified Church Foundation giving, but also others uh, where I was involved. Uh, here are saving uh, churches. And I want to start, and you have to planning also for the future of the churches. So you have to get um, sometimes using concepts and find out what you can uh, can do uh, with the churches uh, in a small step show to the, the stakeholders this is possible and um, maybe uh, it's a way out of, uh, of this uh, degradation of the churches. Um, yeah, a few pictures just of, of using churches, uh, cinema, exhibitions, uh, um, events, uh, music, um, it's a it's a white, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a big space, but you can use it really uh, for, for many uh, purpose. Okay, thank you. 
Thank you very much, Sebastian, for another kind of uh, introduction. I would like to say um, kind of overview of the history of the Saxons in the region and uh, um, the situation um, of the, the buildings. And uh, yeah, of course, connected to the question, what's to do in future? Um, I'd like to add the next presentation uh, fastly. So uh, Ramona Lachko david uh, please, the floor is yours um, with Fortified Churches uh, Foundation, Adaptive Reuse Program Challenges and Opportunities. So. Now it should be yes. possible. Ah, yeah, now you're here. Now I'm on. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tim. Thank you, uh, Professor uh, Paul Zaleski, for, for your introduction. And actually, I think you have uh, summarized quite closely the, the scope of the work of uh, the foundation uh, so far. And we, we are grateful for the close uh, cooperation of the University of the Adrena in the past uh, for this. Sebastian, thank you for your uh, very visual journey uh, into, into the history and uh, present of the, of the fortified churches and for anticipating some of the topics that I will uh, address in my, uh, in my presentation. So yes, it's time to look a little bit into the future and uh, I must uh, underline that this future, it's still at the conceptual level for us at the foundation and we hope that in the coming years, we are moving more into the hands-on of it. But for this, we will need the support of, um, of everyone. And, uh, and I'm very grateful for the possibility of this kind of dialogues and formats to, to get there, to that hands-on future. I will uh, try to share my, uh, my screen. Um, yeah, um, okay. And uh, uh, right now I'm in the... Am I sharing it? Us. Can you? No. Uh, okay, just a second. Um... All right, share. Yep. Yes, now you can see it, right? Yes. Yes. Or... Okay, and I will switch to a presentation mode yeah all right so uh i will start with uh with a problem statement uh, in the before going into the real uh the main uh, core topics of uh, challenges and opportunities that sebastian has already anticipated and i would like to start with the definition of uh, adaptive reuse uh, because some of us uh, have heard many of, of them and i think uh, it's good to swift a little bit through them and understand what is from uh, from the foundation's point of view uh, the definition which we are uh, trying to follow and uh, until now the topic of uh, adaptive reuse uh, has been very much uh, popular in the in the construction uh, in the building sector in the interior design and in the architecture sector itself and it hasn't been or it's in a f there are only few examples where uh, adaptive reuse or further use it's actually tackled at policy level and uh, well, uh, for this, I have selected a couple of, uh, of them. So uh, the first one, which is a general one, is that any reuse, repurposing of any building for which there have been, there have to be changes to the characteristics, to the material aspect uh, of the building. Then I have selected one that I think uh, matches uh, mostly the, the scope of, uh, or the scope of the program that we would like to develop. And the fact that we would like to adaptive reuse to become a common practice included in the term of conservation defined as sustaining and enhancing the significance of a heritage asset. So, and this brings the, the, the vacant and the poor condition of the heritage building so, uh, in the attention of the public and it brings the, the building back into use. In Romania, uh, the 
adaptive reuse is defined as a process through which the building or a set of buildings which lost its original purpose is actively adapted to the new function in technical, constructional, architectural, and urban aspect with the preservation of its spatial structures. So this brings us to the fact that there are certain limits of the acceptable change. And I will address here something that has been defined as great zones. And um, um, I've been, uh, we've been doing a lot of uh, desk research on the topic and the recently uh, publication of open heritage uh, project on mapping the, uh, the current heritage reuse policies and regulations at, uh, at the European level has been very useful. And what they say about the gray, gray zones is that uh, through this, um, the way cultural heritage, for example, is protected in Romania, uh, it's a, it's a um, significant uh, grading. So as Sebastian has pointed out, we have buildings of category A and we have buildings of category B, but this has been a little bit randomly done. And without um, a decisional power at, at the local level, the, the acceptable change stands at the, at the decision of uh, cultural heritage officers and of, of course, uh, national uh, government uh, bodies. So, um, and uh, I believe sometimes uh, the heavy regulation of the type of intervention on heritage buildings contribute to their uh, freeze in, in time. Then, the, as you have seen, there are variations in, in definitions. And then there is this division of the owners of, of, of the buildings. So uh, the Evangelic Church uh, itself has, uh, has um, um, it's not adopting a management of change at, at the current point, which should be uh, focused on what can we do with, the, with these buildings. And there are also society constraints uh, in the, in the, from the point of view that a lot of people, they, as Sebastian mentioned, these, these uh, buildings are like white spots in the, in the villages, and uh, they don't have any more relationship to the cultural heritage side. They don't know how to relate anymore to the building. Uh, then the legal framework. Well, uh, I already highlighted some of the of the points, but the government attitude as well is a little bit risk adverse, and um, and also through its policies, it's not sustaining um, change uh, in uh, in how we approach uh, um, cultural management, uh, her cultural heritage management. We can also speak about the commodification and instrumentalization of cultural heritage. And this is very um, visible in the way adaptive reuse is defined or in the way adaptive reuse projects are financed. Because um, uh, you can see that a lot of funding for adaptive reuse projects are coming from uh, other uh, programs and not cultural uh, programs initiated, so not Creative Europe, but uh, uh, more like development, regional development programs um, and uh, funds from uh, uh, lesson to, to the youth sector or to, to the creative industries. Or so the adaptive reuse or the further use is always defined in connection with another sector. And then that also regulates the way um, uh, culture has, so that influences the way cultural heritage has become a commodification. And then, uh, well, uh, policy initiatives uh, locally uh, in Romania, the, the government is still uh, in the process of, of defining a cultural heritage strategy. So that's also not a, a very, um, uh, uh, let's say, favorable environment uh, for, for such a program. Then we come back to what is then the role of the Fortified Church uh, Foundation. And uh, as Sebastian has anticipated, uh, we need to focus on, uh, on uh, building up the so-called heritage communities. The um, Article 2 of the Faro Convention uh, defines these heritage communities as people who care, any, anyone who cares for, for the cultural uh, heritage site. 
Unfortunately, yes, Romania is not a signatory of the FARO Convention, so maybe that's actually a, a niche of, of policy work that the, the foundation uh, can do. And then there is this opportunity uh, that we have um, funding, which we received uh, from the Ministry of, uh, from the German Ministry of Culture, which includes uh, uh, a couple of uh, programs, and one of them is the roof program that um, uh, Ekaterina Gal, uh, my colleague, together with Sebastian and uh, a an, uh, collaborator architect, Tudor Pavelescu, are uh, currently uh, implementing. Then uh, we have this uh, opportunity to develop three, scope, three uh, concepts for, uh, for adaptive reuse or further use of uh, 45 uh, churches. I would like here just to make like a, a brief program overview and uh, what, what is our aim? So we are targeting cultural heritage uh, sites that are neglected uh, uh, by the communities. Uh, we would like to develop an uh, innovative adaptive reuse models. And here I'm thinking about financing management and, uh, and other uh, um, funding, finding other funding tools. I would like to underline, like Sebastian has presented, um, in the case of the fortified churches, of Angelic fortified churches in Romania, we actually don't talk about um, an adaptive reuse or the a further, further use at um, not so much at the, the functional level, because if you have seen, they have adapted through through in, in time and they have always served the, the communities around them. So when, when we talk in our case about adaptive reuse, we talk more about the type of partnerships, the, the new partnerships that we, we can establish with the heritage communities, the new partnerships we can establish with, with public institutions in, in a more sustainable management of, of these uh, heritage buildings. And of course, the, the new function uh, that uh, uh, has to be in accordance with its architectural and aesthetical uh, value. Um, of course, we are uh, looking into empowering um, newly formed communities uh, that Sebastian briefly touched upon, but like Casa Apold, we have actually um, a network, we call them avant-garde, a network of, uh, of associations uh, or uh, foundations who, are, uh, who have in, uh, in administration through a, a contract with the Evangelic Church, one of the fortified churches, and they try to implement activities or they are actually focusing on the, their conservation and then the preservation of these buildings. Um, then, uh, well, the innovation we are uh, talking here in, in the program is the fact that we are focusing on religious cultural heritage in, in our case. We would like also to develop a participative uh, model. And that means involving the owners, the, the heritage professionals, the local authorities and local communities in the, in the co-design process, making sure that each stakeholder has a voice um, in the decision making. Then we, of course, we, are work, uh, we would like to work with the cultural heritage uh, professionals. And we have uh, so far uh, been working like with Tudor Pavelescu for the, for, the for the roof program. We have also uh, hired an architect for finding us a feasible, for uh, putting together a preliminary study in a project idea that the foundation it, itself would like to develop. And uh, this is a platform where we thought it's a, it's a platform for young architects who, who have been working in, um, uh, in cultural heritage management, have developed projects for cultural heritage site, and it's, it's a, an opportunity for them to bring in their experience and more innovative and future looking, uh, towards the future looking the ideas. Uh, then um, encourage a new collaborative living and working. Well, this is actually not such a, uh, a, a new uh, concept because the Saxon community in the past, this is how they, uh, they lived, uh, they, they were working together and, and the churches as Sebastian has well pointed out are a result of a community effort, people coming together and building these uh, fortifications. 
we have uh, tried to identify the, the pro program beneficiaries, but uh, they are quite um, obvious. The, and um, well, it's the landscape of the fortified churches, the owners, the local communities, the local authorities, then moving a little bit further to the rural areas and the professional community. And well, I've included the, the private sector as well, because I believe it's time to sensitize a little bit of the private sector, the local one as well, the general private sector, um, about the opportunities there are in, uh, in, involve, in uh, investing in these, uh, in these uh, heritage buildings. And now we get to the core <laughs> of, uh, of uh, our, uh, well, of my presentation. And I've tried a little bit to differentiate between uh, the challenges. Some Sebastian has already pointed out, but I think first is a poor uh, territorial uh, governance and, uh, and planning that we are uh, talking about. Um, and this is, uh, and this contributes to a disharmonious uh, development. Um, then, of course, there, are, there is a cultural harmonization uh, uh, tendency, and um, uh, it also, uh, which is also, and there is in, in many parts of the rural areas, we can also talk about an ethnic uh, divide. Um, then there are um, environmental factors which uh, contribute greatly, like human and natural disasters, earthquakes, or uh, COVID <laughs> pandemics, which contribute uh, to, to the decay of, of uh, these buildings. Then we have a lack of guidelines uh, on how to use, how the new use can be uh, affected and the impact on the, on the cultural heritage sites. I was trying, yes, at international level, we have a lot of uh, research so far, but even that research is uh, actually focused on urban areas, on urban cultural heritage sites, and less on rural uh, cultural heritage sites. And yesterday, for example, we had um, a long day of, uh, of uh, meetings and webinars with the uh, FRH, the, um, the Network for Religious Heritage. And um, a lot of the, of, the, of the participants were pointing out that uh, uh, the uh, heritage buildings in rural areas have much more urgent and, uh, and uh, uh, greater needs. And they should be taken into a more, uh, a, well, close attention to it. Then uh, we have another challenge, the contemporary um, building uh, practices. Um, well, uh, we, Sebastian has already showed some of the of the mismanagement uh, or the unfortunate interventions on even uh, EU funded uh, uh, projects of restoration and uh, conservation. Um, then there is a public unawareness of the potential benefits uh, of adaptive uh, reuse and of cultural heritage sites in, in general, a topic which is very acute in, the, in uh, Romania. Then at local level, uh, the challenge that I mentioned before connects to this little involvement or interest on behalf of the local community, lack of further funding, uh, and then even uh, funding that tests just uh, temporary uses. Um, so smaller interventions that uh, organizations or NGO can do before more costly solutions are uh, implemented. Then, of course, uh, we are also considering that adaption sometimes is difficult to achieve in the way that balances the conservation and heritage needs uh, with, with, and, the, and the heritage significance of, of the place with the new use. Then, as Sebastian pointed out, there is scarce availability of human uh, resources uh, to, to implement and to monitor such, uh, such project. Uh, our colleague, Cathy, knows very well the volatile uh, construction market <laughs> uh, because uh, we've been struggling for the roof pro program as well to, to be able to anticipate costs for, for projects, for uh, construction projects on cultural heritage sites and uh, they change uh, from year to year. So um, this is very difficult in, in terms of planning and, and budgeting. 
Then, of course, as, uh, as it has been pointed out in the presentation before, the age and state of decay of the envisaged buildings. So the fact that uh, one third of, of these buildings are already in an advanced uh, state of, uh, of decay. Well, but let's not talk about only the constraints and the challenges. And I think um, we are approaching this, this subject and this topic and the development of this, uh, this kind of program at a very good moment in, uh, in, in time. And I'm saying this because uh, after reading the, the report from, after, uh, from Open Heritage, and then uh, there is another interesting initiative, CLIC uh, project, uh, also at the European level. And uh, we notice that there is a shift of perception on the society and, and uh, in the societal and economic value of heritage and its role in the sustainable development. And uh, following the European Year of Cultural Heritage in 2018, uh, in the preparation of that and following uh, that year, there were a lot of publications on, on this uh, topic. Then the availability of funding. Well, I was saying before that is challenging at local and national level, but at international level, there are actually um, um, a wider uh, spread of programs where adaptive reuse projects, uh, through which adaptive reuse uh, projects uh, could be uh, funded. And uh, I will not enter into the, uh, because it will take too much time to just uh, go th through all of them, but the Open Heritage Report, it's, it's a very good uh, a source of information for that, and they do a very good mapping of those. Um, and the fact that the EU, so at institutional level, it's starting to explicitly promote adaptive reuse of heritage as, as a practice. Then um, let's shift now from, from a European level to a local and national level. And actually, we have examples of similar programs or project developed already in Romania. And here I would like to uh, highlight the activity of Mihai Eminescu Trust and, and their models of uh, governance and, and uh, funding, which are an inspirational source. Unfortunately, they are not, uh, these, these experiences are not so much presented in, in the form of a toolkit that other organizations can, can apply or adapt. Uh, then there are NGOs active and doing a large part of the job of the public institutions. Casa Apold, it's a good example <laughs> here in, uh, in uh, our uh, call. Then in our meeting, the, um, there are some promising changes in the attitude of some public institutions and uh, towards cultural heritage management. And here I would like to highlight the National Institute uh, for, for Heritage. Uh, they have now uh, a recent project. They want to open a center for interpretation and documentation on cultural heritage, which I think it will be um, an extremely important tool to, to uh, promote this, to, to take further this, uh, this change. Uh, then there are uh, the launch of important tourism and cultural routes. There are some cultural routes uh, in, in Romania, but they don't, uh, they don't specifically name uh, fortified churches. So there's, uh, we, we haven't officially registered so far a cultural route of the fortified churches in, in Romania, something to think about in the future. And there is this um, interesting uh, tourism uh, cultural route via Transylvanica, which of course uh, in, the, in the section that it uh, goes through, through the Southern Transylvania, it includes the, the fortified churches. And um, the shift, and it's a little bit, uh, well, it's not, uh, it's on a small scale happening, but there is a shift now uh, as a consequence of the pandemic from urban areas to rural areas. And people need um, a reason to, to do that, not just because of, uh, of uh, a more, uh, um, uh, well, space and cleaner air and uh, a more sustainable living, but also in terms of activities that they can uh, do there. So um, we have thought about uh, a methodology in order to, to develop the, the program starting from all these, um, these aspects. 
And uh, we've done an analysis of the con uh, context of adaptive reuse at uh, international and at national level. So there was a lot of desk research done uh, so far. Then we have done a mapping of, of the stakeholders and actually uh, the CLIC project has a very nice, um, uh, in, in their report, they have a very nice uh, diagram of uh, different models of this uh, of a single custodian model, then uh, uh, then the community custodian model and the private custodian model. Um, again, I didn't want to pull them in here in here because they are there uh, and you can you can uh, check them out. But for us, uh, we qualify under the private custodian model. So uh, where the, the owner is the evangelic church and we are the, the fortified church foundation comes in at another part to, in, to help in, in the management of these um, heritage buildings. Um, then we have tried to develop um, a criteria matrix. And uh, for, for this, the, the analysis before has helped us to, to come up with this uh, criteria matrix. Then we did a mapping of alternative views that could be implemented. And uh, um, I think it was our most creative <laughs> exercise um, where we, we put a lot of ideas uh, up on, uh, on, the, on the board. And um, we also consulted uh, some of uh, our avant-garde uh, network uh, members, so the local associations, um, uh, having an administration of a fortified uh, church. And trust me, there's, there's no lack of ideas <laughs> in, uh, in this regard. So that's a good sign. Um, and then we will try to evaluate each single use against the criteria matrix above. above. And of course, we try to identify the constraints, but also the, the opportunities uh, to implement, um, to implement uh, each use. And well, well, what are the objectives then concretely of, of a problem like that? Excuse uh, me, um, that I'm interrupting you. Uh, please come to an end. So <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm on, yes. Hey, well, thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. So, uh, well, we want to achieve the development of three pilot projects for adaptive reuse uh, 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 program and uh, development of this decision-making support toolkit. Um, we, through this, we want to reduce dependency on public authorities and also achieve a closer cooperation with other public institutions and, and NGOs. And in the terms of outcomes, well, concretely, what we want, and I think it's very important, is to have this adaptive reuse toolkit that other organizations can, can use. Uh, and in the future, a matchmaking platform, well, by which what I mean, it's uh, meeting the needs of the, of the fortified churches to the interests of the heritage uh, communities. And of course, further partnerships, which are always um, an important uh, step in the management of such a program. So thank you, everyone. And I'm looking forward to your questions. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah. The opportunity to ask and to add something, I would say, uh, still uh, at the end of our today's uh, our lectures program. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for your introduction into the work of the uh, for Fortified Churches Foundation and very important uh, questions. Um, how, what's the focus on, on your work? And I think that's the focus on our work too. Uh, when we will meet uh, next year together, maybe not in hands-on practice uh, on the object, but uh, how to think about it, how to plan and how to develop the idea of um, uh, fortified churches preservation. Um, okay, next point uh, on our list would be kind of video walk is written here. Uh, Sebastian uh, already prepared short clips. Something has happened on my screen. I don't know what. Um, Sebastian, yes. you, you, ah, you, you already yeah. intervented. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so we are a bit in delay in okay. case of time. And I don't know what's about the timetable of our speakers uh, later on day, but I have to keep the thing a bit under control. So uh, please uh, be in time, all of you, and uh, maybe open your chat that you can see when I'm writing to you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't have to to interrupt you during the the speeches. So it would be better, and and it sounds not so unfriendly. <laughs> and I'm doing that. Okay, Sebastian. Um, um, how much time I have now? 
yeah theoretically one minute but um <laughs> uh, yes that's that's a timetable but uh, okay. keep it short um, as you can that would be really nice but uh, we we created these points called video box to uh, in between yeah. the 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 presentations to to give some yeah some yes. easier and more con and more concrete um uh, uh view on the object we are talking about yeah mm -hmm. now let's switch to uphold yeah uh, 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 maybe keep keep the audio off and and, and yes, yes, talk yes. live yeah so yes, for a better sound and now okay uh, the floor is yours okay. so you can see yeah yeah okay you can hear me and see me yeah i hope so because i cannot see you yes yeah, okay. Yeah, so um, yesterday we had a nice, uh, also I would like actually to uh, show you live uh, the place, but uh, uh, it was risky uh, with the internet connection. So I show you just um, uh, uh, the buildings. This is a castle keeper house uh, who was uh, added on the uh, ring wall uh, later. And here was a school. Uh, inside the first school in Uphold. And uh, here I was living uh, for five years uh, on the beginning of my journey in Uphold. Um, this, uh, you see, they changed the roof already. Here you are rest of the defending platform up part. And, uh, uh, and they are uh, changing already and uh, taking down uh, the the defending platform. So uh, it's a, a in the 18th century they start to not uh, restore or not maintain uh, defending elements. Okay, I just let the film going. Uh, now we are like in the in the first courtyard or uh, in the outer courtyard, um, and we will go uh, now to the. Uh, gate to the second building. Uh, yep. Yes. So this is a gatehouse. Uh, it was a, a town hall. It was a, uh, the mayor uh, uh, place. And uh, in the 19th century, they're changing this tower to a, um, a farmhouse, actually. Um, it was a museum inside. Um, and then was a, an uh, atelier inside, it was an office inside. So now we're using this in a, in a foundation as a, uh, as a main room for, for seminars, for, uh, for meetings, uh, as a working space. And this should be uh, the same in the future. Uh, here's the main entrance, the gate uh, through the, the castle. And this is a, uh, the outer ring wall. Uh, you see here. Uh, now we walk to the second courtyard. Uh, uh, so here there was made first um, uh, a kind of um, half courtyard, like a zwinger for animals. Um, and here you see uh, the, the, also the outer ring wall, the south part of the fortified church. And here are the bacon houses which are a, a new bacon house and old bacon house. Um, and the new bacon house was made uh, in the 20th century. So it's the newest building added from the, um, from the first neighborhood in the village for, uh, for, for, yeah, for bacon, uh, for storing uh, food. So even uh, it's had not any more a function to, um, uh, to protecting uh, the food or the village in the, uh, uh, in the church, but uh, they're keeping this tradition. And this is a south tower uh, on this side. So you can look a closer look. Now, uh, this bacon house, we will uh, plan to make there a, a flat inside. So there are two rooms up for um, a volunteer flat. Uh, here in this uh, new bacon house, we installed two years ago uh, a first uh, castle or a fortified church kitchen. 
uh, because our events needed that we have to have facilities for um, branches and, and music uh, concerts. This is a courtyard, uh, the south courtyard with uh, apple trees, plum trees, piers. Uh, we make a survey uh, of these trees and uh, we have 12 different kind of um, apple trees and uh, piers which are endemic in Romania, also in, in, in Apold, because the Saxon brought them and uh, cultivate them uh, over 100 years. Uh, and uh, this special kind of uh, apples exist just in the villages or in the region. Okay, so now we walking uh, to, now we walking to the Oats Tower uh, it's a inner gate tower. Uh, there was, of course, an um, iron construction for protecting. And we see the church and the church tower. This is the old tower from inside. <clears throat> uh, it was also livable. Um, uh, the castle keeper on the first, uh, on the beginning, was living there. And here are the rest of the. Um, in a uh, ring wall, which was took, there was taking down it in the 19th century to rebuild the uh, school. And uh, now we're using this as a um, exhibition place or for con uh, concerts or for cinema for the kids in the village. Uh, yes, so this is the west part of, a of this uh, fortified church. Um, here you see again the gate house or the gate tower. And uh, now we're coming to the storehouse. Um, not many churches has a storehouse inside, exist few churches. Um, it's a, like a long defending house uh, for storing grain, wine, and uh, also for living. This is a view from the north side of the stores, it's quite huge. And it has uh, three levels. We, the cellar we're using uh, for for concerts or events. Uh, at the moment, this up part, it's a storeroom. But here we uh, hope to establish one's uh, ateliers because it's a huge space. It's a dark space, so they, had, they need a good light concept. But we hope we can use uh, here uh, ateliers for crafts uh, who are still exist in a village and um, uh, who are uh, in danger. And so we can giving the people um, a place for work. This place between the inner wall and the outer wall, uh, uh, we would like to make a playground. What we planned uh, also a summer camp uh, this year together with a uh, Fortified Church Foundation, but uh, we had also to cancel it. So we hope we can make uh, this uh, hands-on conservation uh, from the Fortified Church Foundation uh, here to make a playground. Um, this is a white tower, the priest, uh, the first priest house uh, of the village, uh, of the place. Uh, it was heatable. You see here the chimney. It was also changed many times. Um, it has a, a different uh, history uh, and now it's used as a bacon tower, as it was used as a bacon tower. Um, but here was living the, the priest. Uh, and here the uh, also the defending platform was taken down um, probably in the 18th century. Okay, yeah. We, we, I make it a little bit faster and we can skip. Um, the church, this is a um, fortified church um, with a ch bell tower. Um, of course, the center of, a forti of every fortified church. Here you see the, the, the fortification of the church with a defending platform uh, over the nave and over the arch, uh, over the core. And here you have um, uh, from, the, from the stone pillars, uh, my hand from the stone pillars there I was prolonging it's a system but it's uh, often you find it by fortified churches and they are the arches who has access to the attic 
and they could throw down here uh, hot oil, um, bee caves, uh, everything to defending uh, themselves. So this was a safety place together with the tower uh, for the village. Now we enter the church. Now it was getting quite dark, so it's already uh, not so well uh, quality. So um, this is a church in the naves. It's a late Gothic style. Um, here you have uh, the elements from the uh, from the old church. <clears throat> Aha! Time. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Uh, so here uh, it's a uh, it's a Arc de Triumph uh, with a wall painting from the 14th century. Uh, it's left from the old church. Um, and let's see. Here we have uh, the other wall paintings on the north side and uh, uh, the balcony, the gallery, the wooden gallery. Um, okay, this is the altar. Um, this organ was made in the 19th century. Uh, they need place, so sometimes you're finding a church's organ on the east part. This is a sacramental niche. Um, left from the Catholic time. And it's a few from the, for the church, ah, the, it's a baptismal font uh, from the 17th century. It was restored from a student from Potsdam, uh, seven, eight years ago. Okay, we're coming to the end. Yes, and this is a, a, a few to the nave again. Um, uh, the benches we took off because it was renovating uh, some years ago the inside and where we discover the, the wall paintings. Uh, we, we, we planning and we working also on a concept for the using of this place, uh, not in a religious way, and so also as an association, as an educational inter interactive way. Uh, the church allowed us to planning at least. Uh, so they are open. Uh, so let's say this we can skip. Here are the frescoes. And uh, just on the end, maybe a few uh, from the tower uh, to the village. Um, this is a Romanian part of a village uh, with the Orthodox Church. Uh, in the former time, uh, the ethnic groups was living in the same village, but quite separately, also there was not mixing uh, um, uh, uh, themselves just later, but uh, the center was a Saxon, uh, there in the east part was a Romanian and uh, more far away was in the Roma community. This is the center of a village of Apold. Um, where we can see um, uh, it's a, a kind of a, Triangle. This is a town hall, uh, the school, and um, yeah, the, the major function of the village. Okay. Um, yeah, Tim, gleich geht's weiter. So, in the last few, just from outside. Uh, so, yeah, we like to uh, just uh, this place to open. Also, we open it already to the village. Uh, we like to continue with it. So the the white place uh, to get integrated in the village or otherwise the village uh, with the ethnic groups, Romanian, Hungarians, or Roma, uh, get not afraid to be implicated or involved in, the, in a place like this. And we hope uh, uh, like to, to create an educational open space. We don't want to make a museum from it. It is a museum. Uh, uh, by himself, but uh, we want to use this place for uh, needs from the village, uh, from the association, but also uh, visitors who are coming. Okay. Thank you very much for the really nice pictures and of course an impression for all the people uh, me as well. They don't know the place and... I, I can just... Uh, um, 
when, the, when we go in the break, I, I can just uh, show the, the drone film. Uh, but in the break, then everybody can have a look if they want. Let's see. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Sebastian, for the impression from Apol, Trapol, the place where you live, where you work. And uh, that's the certified church we will meet next year together. Um, could you stop your presentation, yes. Yes, please, so that we come back to the... Yeah, thank you very much. Um, okay, I'd like to switch to our next uh, presenter, uh, Mechthild Nolmino. Um, I, I think that I have to open your audio channel, which, where you are. <laughs> Uh, okay. What's that? Uh, now I see a presentation, but I can't see. Sebastian, could you? Uh, whoa, 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 just a second. I, we can't hear you because... Sebastian? Yeah, I'm here. Could could you switch off your audio, please? And yeah. I see the presentation, but I can't see. Um, yeah, I can't hear you, Mechthild. Um. where she is, I don't know. Uh, so we are a bit... So, no, you can hear me now. Now, now I can yeah, hear you and the others, I think, as well. And I see you as well. And now, yeah, and please can. share. Yeah, now it fits. Thank you very much. So, good. Great. So I think I will shorten my presentation <laughs> due to the time constraints and i have changed uh i have changed the order of uh um the content of my speech today so i'm first speaking about uh, what we are doing as a state monument service agency and uh, then i will speak about conservation project process so I have a problem now because I can't see. Yeah. Oh. Uh, we can dich nicht hören. Weißt du, du bist jetzt eigentlich freigeschaltet. Kannst du es immer noch mal probieren? Nee, eigentlich, wir hören dich nicht. So, we should hear you. But I think the problem is in your side, I'm sorry. <laughs> Something went wrong with your computer. The cable, some buttons. It's 
quite strange because uh, we already heard you and now we can't hear you anymore. So that's really strange. Uh-huh, let's fix it. As it seems to be, it takes some, some time. So I don't know if we need some minutes. So, okay, I get the information. Maybe that we can change. So, okay, if it seems to be, you need some, mm -hmm. some time, much more time. Um, so, yes, but she, she's here. Yeah, yeah, she's the list. Here. Okay, maybe we will change some some presentations so and give her the opportunity maybe to to get out and come back again. So because I don't know what I can do. Uh, no, many can, not, nothing. Maybe maybe Mr. Gerhard Klesik. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Yeah. At first we will start with the presentation of Olaf Food and then uh, Mr. Gerhard Klesik will add something. So um, let's do it. Yeah. Okay. Then then we change, as I see. Um, Okay, so Mr. Koresik, it would be okay for you. It's okay when we start with the presentation of Olaf Hood. Mr. Koresik, he's here. Okay, why not? Um, so let's okay. Then we start with the presentation of Olaf Food from uh, the University uh, in Coburg. And uh, if Gerhard Grassic can hear us, he will add afterwards something. I don't know. It takes some minutes. We will listen and see a presentation that prepared Mr. Hood, who can't be here unfortunately today. And then, as I said, his colleague will add something. Okay, um, Sonia. Can you start the presentation, please? And Sebastian, could you close the microphone, please? Dear students, dear colleague, welcome to my short presentation. Left picture, it's me, and uh, right picture, my colleague uh, Gerhard Grasik. Uh, I made my civil engineer PhD uh, about 2002, and I got my Master of Arts in Heritage Conservation at the University of Bamberg. Uh, at uh, 2014. Our teaching and research fields are monitoring of historic buildings, <clears throat> giving courses in construction materials and structural analysis. And for the civil engineer students, I'm giving lectures in mechanics and statics. And uh, we apply this is the team of uh, our team of digital heritage technologies. This master degree program is going about two years and is performed in collaboration with the University of Bamberg. Coburg is located at the northern part of Bavaria in Germany. And <clears throat> right picture, you can see our very well campus design uh, where we will still working now. What can be our parts in the summer school? Hopefully next year. First part can be the telemetry and we want to show you how you can uh, use it, how you can apply this uh, on the buildings and how you can put in this data in the CAD program like uh, AutoCAD in order to draw the plans. And secondly, uh, we want to show you how you can use it, uh, the three-dimensional scanner. And uh, in this slide, you can see a longitudinal section of, of uh, three-dimensional point cloud made in the dome of sites located in Sachsen-Anhalt. Our third part can be using a photogrammetry uh, using the structure for motion procedures in order to get some 
auto photos and in order to perform some material and structural and uh, damage analysis like this this work was well being done by a student of us and all techniques uh, combined uh, can be performing uh, or can be leading to damage detection deformation and crack analysis here did in this slide uh, applied to the church tower st jacobi, st. jacobi in sangerhausen last year we we are very lucky to perform an excursion to the Kirchenburgen and Siebenbürgen. A lot of students participated and we made an applied day in, at the Kirchenburg Schal in Siebenbürgen uh, using tachometry and uh, using uh, terrestrial laser scanner and the technique of photogrammetry too. Some students made sketches of the roof inside and after the work was well being done, we made a group photo and if you <clears throat> show uh, the faces, you can see uh, we're very lucky and I want to just recommend you to participate uh, in next year uh, in the summer school. It's uh, of course, a great time, uh, a great week. Uh, I think this will be so. Thank you for attention and uh, I'm looking forward to see you and I wish you a good day. Bye bye. Yeah, thanks a lot <laughs> for the short introduction. Um, I don't know, uh -huh. that's quite interesting. You can see see me uh, because uh, I don't know why Jan Rauer is in the focus of in the center of my <laughs> of my uh, it shouldn't be so I'd like uh, to give um, the floor to Mr. Gerhard Gresick uh, he's a colleague of uh, Mr. Hood we already listened so you should be able to talk to us okay hello uh, together and uh, now I uh, show you a little presentation uh, about yes, photography, uh, the photogrammetry. Uh, I will share the presentation one moment. After this introduction of our course of degree, I'm going to give a compact outline how to create templates for mapping graphics with the help of current photogrammetry focusing on wall mapping. Photometri photogrammetric techniques have been used in construction survey for a long time. Due to extensive digitization in photography apart from image ratification and stereometry, a further development from multi-image photogrammetry structure from motion, short F, SFM is used increasingly. A process of tuning 2D picture information into a 3D surface description. Hence, various data can be generated, point clouds, with the color information from the photos, 3D meshing, texture, and colored, eventually autographic images are often created from this data with uh, suitable as templates for mapping graphics in heritage conservation. This is the church St. Michael in Bösenburg in Sachsen-Anhalt. It served as a practice project for our students. They compiled photogrammetry with structure from motion. Afterwards, it was used for wall mapping to distinguish different stone types and other building materials like, for example, plaster. To do so, it is necessary to create various images with which are later used to get through to scale results. 
to achieve this, targets must be installed to, um, to the object as is visible on these images right here. So they can be meteorologically captured to get the needed coordinates in X, Y, Z. We usually work with a tachometer, which can be seen in the pictures. To obtain a valuable image collective, the pictures need to create an overlap in at least 30 to 50 percent. For the processing, we use the program Agisoft in our degree course. The workflow of this program is relatively simple. I would like to show you in a selection of exemplary pictures the process in a short outline. After adding the photos, they are aligned as you can see in the result. The correct survey position of the images can be shown here and here. You can already see the spatial alignment. Via the targets, the object is placed in the correct position. Here can be the picked targets. Nationally, only the visible areas are measured and calculated. On this place, in this area, you can see that was not recorded with photos. The point cloud is condensed. In the next step, at this stage, the model still consists of singular points with individual 3D coordinates. You can see here in the picture. From these individual points, a mesh needs to be calculated on the following steps. Here in magnification, you can see very nicely how this method delivers a spatial result. When the parameters are exact, a very high resolution can be reached. We often combine this method with 3D laser scanning to still successfully complete in accessible objects, this mesh or 3D grid model gets textured afterwards. Auto images like this are created from this, on which various findings can consequently be mapped. Here you can see some of the results of Alexander Hertel's course paper one of our students. Now, as a second example, I will show you frescoes in the Western transept in the Cathedral of Augsburg. The difficulty lay in the scaffolding that had already been set up that made the creation of mapping graphics much more complicated. During a project eight years ago named Records, scan surveys of this area were already compiled. Unfortunately, the quality did not live up to present day standards anymore. So there were images produced for every scaffolding level and via uh, SFM calculated into autographic images. From the scan, the natural targets were read out and used for ratification 
you can see it in this picture. This is a partial uh, uh, result of the textured 3D meshing. The different degrees of brightness are due to the individual photos, to the respective scaffolding levels and their shadows. You see one of the mapping templates, the original Dean A1, with the coffin wall area inserted in the correct position, which shows the representation of an earlier Christopher here from the time before the bulletin. A single image rectification com comes from the Linsinger company from Austria. The following three images, the level of detail of the auto image created from around 600 to 700 images is visible, which cover the wall frescoes from a size of about 14 by 18 meters. Here you see the scale of this part. Thank you for your attention and this brief insight into a small part of our teaching. I'm looking forward to the summer school in Uppold. Thank you very much. Um, so, um, yeah, Mrs. Uh, Noel Minor is back, as it seems to be. Um, hopefully, technical device is working now. Yes, uh, I hope. I see uh, you and yes. I hear you. You hear me. Quite but good. I, <laughs> okay, thank you. So then, <laughs> next um, trial. Um, I'm speaking about uh, conservation process and maintenance. Um, and I want to introduce you or take you with me uh, into the work of our um, uh, monument Preservation Agency. Uh, you can see here a church from the, um, well, it's a, um, also a devastated church in an area of former uh, reach mountain activity. Uh, it's not mountain, but uh, it's um, a coal mining industry and uh, this um, region has been a, a little bit de devastated and the church hasn't been in use since um, 20 years because it was um, um, given up and should be uh, um, they wanted to remove the whole uh, area to use it for for the coal mining and in the changing of uh, politics uh, the, the the area and also the uh, the church has been uh, preserved and we are now looking for concepts for the church so uh, you can see a parallel not a uh, big problem but in in this area it's now uh, changed uh, uh, changing uh, the structure of the former coal mining uh, mining industry region and uh, we are just at the starting point to uh, develop uh, not only conservation concept but also a new use concept for uh, this church and for uh, other monuments for other buildings in this area. Um, generally spoken, we are um, working um, for record and investigation of cultural heritage uh, in order to, um, to uh, find out what is it uh, what does it makes worth for society and to interest not only experts, 
but also lay persons, let's say, uh, that uh, should involve themselves in to the uh, care of this cultural heritage. So by uh, investigation, by publication, we try to focus the interest of a society to, to this um, uh, cultural heritage. This is an example of a publication for, um, for uh, investigation of uh, mural painting. These are churches in the region of northern East Brandenburg. I think my colleague Jan Rauer will tell you more about the uh, project uh, of monitoring uh, the mural paintings in these uh, mostly church buildings. And we are also in, um, we are also um, organizing our work via projects, research projects, also financed by the um, Environmental uh, uh, Foundation that uh, is one of the main founders of research in uh, cultural heritage in Germany at the moment. Before we had bigger uh, programs for investigation, but at the moment we, we are on the level, let's say below 120,000 euro, that these are projects that are going through uh, without having a great consortium to evaluate uh, proposals for projects. So we are going from project to project to uh, making records and investigation of mortars, of facade decorations. And uh, the last one was uh, the monitoring of mural painting in rural, in rural uh, landscape where we, you have no uh, point uh, of of high cultural interest and where you have to enable the congregations uh, to take care of their churches. So we are combining uh, the investigation of the mural paintings, um, the record, uh, the, the control of condition, the condition surveys uh, and the control of climate. This is an example, a very simple example to compare um, how is the situation in uh, winter before heating and after heating, if there is a, a great difference and if, there's, um, if uh, there are, um, if the heating, the installation of heating puts the mural paintings excuse me, puts the mural paintings in this church uh, of Briesen in the aus, ost of uh, the land Brandenburg, if it puts the mural paintings at risk, as you can see below, that there are um, considerable amounts of salt uh, in the, um, and under the surface of the mural paintings, combined with conservation uh, measurements. And we are also looking for big churches with their rich, um, let's say, furnishment, altars, epitaphs, galleries. Here is an example, the uh, church of the small town Lukau with this rich Baroque um, objects. And we have there, since the beginning of the conservation works in 1998, installed a climate monitoring in order to control the condition. And at the moment, we are also able to discuss if there are consequences of the uh, global, climate change, uh, global climate change to the situation of the uh, objects in the interior of this church. So for us, it is the dialogue between uh, the responsible members of the congregations or custodians and the conservation experts. 
to uh, without the awareness of the congregations, we are not able to conserve and to uh, preserve the cultural heritage. So we were looking what are the respect, respective roles of the, let's say, laymen and the experts and to uh, make them and also the experts aware that it's a twofold, um, it, it, that it is from both sides important to engage uh, in the maintenance of cultural heritage. And for this, to reach that uh, goal, there are two uh, small publications in German uh, to give recommendations how to handle uh, and how to care for cultural heritage in churches. The small publications are, let's say, about 20 years uh, old, 20 and 10 years old. And I think it could be interesting also for, uh, let's say, for our exchange to uh, translate part of them or to, to have a look if these uh, recommendations are interesting uh, also for custodians in, um, in your region. And now I'm coming closer to the, let's say to the work of the experts, working together in conservation restoration, what does it mean? And I'm speaking about that because we are not, on, not only engaged in the um, giving consultants for each special project, but also working together with colleagues and um, with associations of the cons with the Association of Conservation Restoration in Germany, but also in Europe, uh, how does it, um, how could we organize a conservation restoration process and how could we guarantee quality in this process? And so it's a work together, you can see it here. Um, and it's from my perspective that I put the conservatory store in the center. Of, but we can change, everyone can, can make this model looking from themselves. But what is needed is competence. And this is an example uh, just to, to make it uh, visual uh, or visible uh, what kind of competences are needed. And that conservation restoration is a transdisciplinary process to identify and structure problems. And that is what uh, the whole discussion is about now, today, and in the next summer school, summer school to, to identify and structure the problems together. Each party, each, each profes profession will put their own um, contribution in the pot and we will have to look and, and to solve uh, together the problems to let's say first not to solve but to to uh, get closer to identify and structure the problems and then uh, step by step to see what can be already uh, solved and what has to, to be brought into the next the step and to the future and to the long-term um, maintenance of the object. What also is an essential part of this is also the use, the reuse and the finding of the concepts because, uh, and therefore I found, uh, uh, I think it's really interesting to bring the ideas together. So in the process itself, in the conservation re restoration project, which is a part of, these, of the whole schedule, we are going down from, from um, examination to the assessment of needs. And the assessment of needs is where all stakeholders 
come together and say what they need and um, all together have to evaluate what is needed. And then it's again, the action of the conservator restorers to assess what kind of actions are um, in the first order and the second order, what, which are needed and which are um, interesting for all stakeholders. And not only the action, but also the after advice for maintenance. To, to have the whole process in mind helps to, um, to organize and manage all, um, bigger projects, complexer projects that include conservation restoration. And not only conservation restoration, but also building, reconstruction, repair, um, and the involvement of different actors in this process. In Germany, we have different quality assurance systems. As I'm coming from a state authority or from the uh, service monument agency, uh, I may speak about uh, legislation and regulations, but in other countries, uh, there are more focused on standards and guidelines. Um, what I am focusing on is the decision-making process and the professional competences. And together with all these different instruments, uh, we try to get a quality uh, assessment of conservation restoration concepts and their implementation. And we have some standards and guidelines in Germany uh, that might be, some of them might be interesting for, uh, for the project. And we have the International Association for Science and Technology of um, Building Maintenance and Preservation of Monuments that uh, is working and the groups, uh, the working groups there are already composed into this in interdisciplinary manner. So um, they are working on really special problems and uh, it would be interesting, uh, not, not all of these um, different uh, rec, uh, standards, are translated in English, but it, uh, I think that's also interesting to, to have a look what of these um, products results are uh, can be uh, translated, transformed and used. And the last point I wanted to uh, speak about is the uh, planning. Um, in Germany, we have the fee structure for architects and engineers. I don't know if in Romania uh, there exists a com uh, comparable system of project planning and architecture. I don't know, just I have not informed myself about that. Uh, so I just put this into the box for the discussion maybe later on that uh, we, uh, this is a well-established structure for uh, planning and project man management in Germany. And for, for conservation restoration specialist planning, we are at the moment uh, proposing, um, uh, let's say, uh, the conservation restoration specialist planning uh, and uh, as a figure that has to be um, taken, in, taken for serious, let's say. <laughs> for serious and uh, in accordance with the fee structure for architects and engineers uh, to, to accept that from the beginning to the end, if there's conservation restoration part of, of a complex project, project uh, there has been also a, specially, a specialist uh, preparing and and accompanying or leading this part of the project. So 
so to say, uh, maybe uh, there's a lot of, uh, or there's a big group that is responsible, but each of them has uh, their or his own role to contribute in a, a project that involves conservation restoration. So thank you for listening. Thank you. I thank hope, you very uh, yeah, I hope uh, this uh, might be fruitful for, for the future work together. Thank you for the impression uh, out from your work and working here situation and practice in, in Germany, especially Berlin and Brandenburg. And you are perfectly in time. Thank you very much. That's quite cool because I <laughs> have to handle a bit uh, this issue as well, uh, except yeah. the, the, the content, of course, the, the most important thing, but uh, for all the others, that's great. So um, Mr. Jan Raue from the uh, University of Applied Science in Potsdam is our next speaker. Um, so he's here. Yes, he is. And uh, the floor is yours. Give us your presentation. Thank you very much. Hello. So I um, share my desk with you. Hopefully it works like this. Yeah, it seems to be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I can see. Yeah. Nice. All right. Thanks to the organizing team for inviting me uh, and being able to talk to you today. What I'll deliver this afternoon on monitoring is only a shortcut of what I would have delivered on spots at the Heritage Lab Summer School and what I hope to be able to teach next year. Therefore, I'll skip a lot of issues like definitions among others, despite I regard them as important while dealing with a subject matter like ours today. I'd like to present the research program in brief uh, Mechthild already mentioned it, which took place in Brandenburg, <coughs> sorry, from um, 2013 to 17, and on which publication the authors are working hardly currently. The program has been hosted by the German Federal Foundation for the Environment, DBU, for which we are very grateful. As part of the DBU project development of model conservation concepts through the recording and monitoring of anthropogenetic and environmentally damaged medieval wall paintings in Northeast Brandenburg, that's the title in full, I'm sorry for that. The sub-aspect sub monitoring played a central role as the title already shows. Here too, there was above all in course of application, extensive discussion about the monitoring about what monitoring should and can be. To make the complex more tangible, we have modula modularized it as I will present below. Next page. Oh, now that's how to change here. Maybe this way. Yes, exactly. Like this is, uh, this is um, the first pub publication already uh, took place. It's the um, uh, publication on the scientific part of the program, like an Arbeitsheft of Brandenburgisches Landesmuseum in 2017. Okay. As a note, my pics are, um, are all taken from one single object as an example. This is Turian Monastery of Korin in the north of Brandenburg. There is a small hall in the West Wing, so-called Fürstensaal, with mural paintings on north wall. No, no, go ahead here with that. So I'm now I'm blocked here. So next, okay. All right. Um, first turns all, uh, which mu mural paintings was with mural paintings on the north wall. Uh, okay. Um, Corinne has been one of the 40 something uh, selected objects in the mentioned program. Now I come to module one. This includes inventory and condition recording as the basis for monitoring care and maintenance. It comprises restoration, art and building history, as well as scientific investigation of wall paintings in an interdisciplinary exchange. The knowledge gained and the documentation created serve as the basis for maintenance and care concepts to be developed, especially with a special view to the monitoring of possible damaging processes. Next. 
Okay. Um, in areas of suspected, suspected changes in the pigments and color values, the visual observation during the recording of wall paintings should be supported non-destructively by color value measurements and micro x-ray fluorescence analysis, micro XRF, directly on the object with mobile measuring systems. In addition, the possibilities of mobile Raman spectroscopy, yes, next picture. Um, here is uh, our colleague Martin uh, Ziemann from University of Potsdam uh, in the Franciscan Abbey Church of Angermünde with the mobile Raman equipment. Um, this for investigation have been tested on selected accessible paintings. In addition, in unresolved cases, non-destructive samples should be taken using, using various methods, including polarization microscopy, scanning electron microscopy, Raman spectroscopy, and if necessary, Fourier transform infrared spectroscopy, FTIR, and other chemical methods like gas pyrolysis, gas chromatography, to determine pigments, binders, and changes in the fine structure of the paint layer in general. If there are indications for salt damage, the scientific investigations are supplemented by quantitative salt analysis, among others. That would be, you probably noticed, the high level approach. Now to the next, module two. In module two, um, these deeply investigative, uh, investigative scientific methods enabled the involved restorer to correlate the findings of all paintings in an interdisciplinary manner with simple mobile non-destructive examination techniques and compare the results of the minimally invasive examinations with what would, with would be module two um, uh, as a model approach to selected objects with the aim of developing methods for a low level monitoring of wall paintings. On the basis for monitoring developed uh, in module one was the inclusion of highly developed scientific investigation methods. A concept for um, applicable low level monitoring was built in which simple measurements and documentation methods are systematically combined. So much for the theory. What we were able to achieve in the practical self-experiment of low-level monitoring for wall paintings in Brandenburg in brief. Now, where is this picture? Okay. Back. Ah, this one. Okay. In brief. Uh, the main pillar of our low-level monitoring approach is and will remain traditional photographic recording in high resolution and overall very good quality. This took place an incident in grazing light under largely standardized adjustable recording conditions, including angle and distance of the lab, as well as the type of, of artificial lighting. And of course, always with a scale and color wedge. The cardboard frame, this is seen in the, in the picture, turned out to be a very simple but effective instrument. The interior cut out of it outlines exactly an A4 format and brings the scale for recording and one-to-one -one reproduction, which guarantees uncomplicated and exact retri retrieval of the reference point in lighting and exposure conditions. Um, now to, in, in detail, macro shots uh, mapping. Macro photos in the mode just described have been made for as many representative areas of as possible, namely in terms of the state of preservation, type of damage, and frequency of damage. The mapping of, re of representative sections of the wall painting or architectural surface on a scale of one to one as a basis for long-term monitoring initially only refers to a few selected areas. If changes are observed there, the review can be carried out on the remaining areas in full. Now I have a, um, a little row of um, now pictures. Now I come to, um, uh, to, to comparison with previous states 
based on uh, documentation whenever available. And there I want to focus on older publications, literature, uh, older photographs and the archives, which, which turned out to be very useful uh, to judge uh, like the, the, the speed of damage or the course of damage on the, um, um, in, of the objects uh, in, um, in the monitoring. Now, uh, some um, examples of other uh, on um, our monastery, Kurin. This one, this was the first from uh, um, the um, 1920s. This is from the um, uh, 1970s. This is a publication of 1994 and this 1996. And so uh, this is uh, some of uh, you will um, be in, uh, familiar with this uh, older uh, literature and you have like uh, uh, on the um, prints like a sheet of a very thin paper like a veil and this was uh, like uh, symbolic for me like to unveil uh, this um, uh, older material and documentation and make it useful to us. Um, next. Now th this is uh, like um, um, a photograph of the um, um, mural painting we are talking about from the 1920s. And uh, so we can compare it with uh, the state from like here from the 1990s and judge uh, the course and, um, and, and the speed of uh, losses. Okay. Um, the record loss of substance by comparing it with existing photographs and mappings, like uh, I showed here on the photographs. And uh, this is like um, uh, outcasts here from 90, um, uh, 1927, 1970s, 1960, 1990, I can't read it because there is something on my desk, and uh, 2017. Mm -hmm. um, the third is the recognition of changes and damage from like um, losses of paint, withdrawal of uh, paint layers, losses, changes in the shape of, um, of paint layers, the plaster surfaces, removal of um, aggregates, plaster grain, sanding, cracks, void losses, uh, salts or salt efflor efflorescences, discolorations like changes in the color values, uh, organic and inorganic layers like vegetation veils, crusts, deposits, other deposits, and compression phenomena due to water absorption and others. Um, different types of mapping included this, uh, like this is the um, current situation uh, of this year and uh, different types of uh, mapping uh, from the last uh, 20 years. Development of measurement methods to determine the progress of damage on selected reference surfaces uh, with the aim to objectify the measurement results, consideration and at attempts to quantify the loss rate. Um, and at the end, a sixth point is the creation of checklists, very important, and maintenance plans, including suggestion and long-term review of the condition and for regular inspection and maintenance of the wall paintings. In the end, as a result, the last step, uh, module three, uh, is uh, resulting from the above mentioned. Uh, it is an ev evaluation and systematization of the procedure in monitoring. An important thought at this point was a comparative consideration of high level and low level monitoring studies. So why low level? In times of high tech enthusiasm and a seemingly unlimited digital possibilities, what is the point of conscious recourse to simple inexpensive methods of investigation and documentation? I would like uh, to recall monitoring is a special form of logging Observing and logging are not necessarily activities that are linked to a high level of technical equipment use. In the abstract ideal case, the unarmed human eye, the shorthand pad and pencil still meet the basic requirements of uh, observation and recording. For the basic requirements of monument preservation, I'll put uh, the camera, the photo camera on top. This statement does not serve to justify casualness or superficiality. 
but wants to define the framework of the possible within the scientifically clean way of working, always provided that executors weight the scope of their knowledge, however gained, in view of the methods used. Right. To leave out the cost argument for a moment, uh, uh, comparing method uh, uh, module one and two, you still have to look at the current situation of monument preservation in rural areas where far beyond of the limits of monument preservation affected by migration and uh, migration and um, obsolescence, lack of economic prospects and transport connection situation. This is particularly true in the study era of the DBU project presented here, the northeast of Brandenburg. Villages abandoned by permanent residents inevitably lead to little, of, uh, little or unused village churches. In addition, there is uh, the personal situation in the state monument office and uh, the county's monument protection authorities, which, with a few exceptions, is characterized by a long-lasting steady reduction of the number of employees. In particular, the village churches and the movable and immovable art treasures they contain are not adequately protected in such a situation. A complete observation and logging of any change process processes by experts has long since ceased to exist. So, what could be the more natural, what could be more natural to ask than to ask about simple and reliable methods that should help to ensure a basic supply of the monu of monuments also on the flat land today and tomorrow. And here, and to come to an end with this brief statement, I'd like to suggest a link with rural Brandenburg and Transylvania cultural landscapes. And therefore, I'm happy to, to suggest a further and deeper collaboration of our two regions, the actors, the societies and universities involved. Uh, my last, um, um, it's um, important for me to say that it's not only the simple, uh, the simple way um, 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 is, uh, is the way. Uh, the combination of both uh, well, it turned out to be very useful and fruitful. So it's not um, like a, a measurement like uh, only the one or only the other way, but uh, you have to combine it and um, be um, this is, um, uh, short, uh, um, um, input of the deeper investigation, you, you get the power to, uh, to apply low level monitoring on broader scale. Uh, my last um, statement is, uh, with a twinkle in the eye, um, uh, Brandenburg, uh, Transylvania and other parts of the world, we are not alone. As a somewhat exotic farewell, a little finding from a UNESCO research mission to Northern Korea. Uh, these are uh, propaganda posters for the preservation of cultural heritage. And I close with the statement, let the whole, where is it? Let the whole state and all the people engage in preservation of natural heritage. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And thanks, especially for the last words. So I, I, I can't imagine what does it mean in North Korea to, to understand something like, like that. I have a picture in front of my eyes of millions of people doing one thing, uh, preserving heritage. <laughs> Thousands of people on it's not streets. our way, probably. Probably maybe, not exactly our way. Maybe not. Maybe I'm, I'm wrong because I, maybe I don't know. Uh, nothing about the situation in North Korea, just some cliche pictures, okay. of course, but quite nice impression from, let's say, the other end of the world. Um, okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, we are in time. Great. Then, Mr. Livio Gligor, I'd like to uh, give you the floor to hold your presentation. Thank you very much. I will change completely the direction of uh, uh, the former speakers because I will try uh, to come to a perspective from the student's point of view and uh, to encourage, as I was saying at the beginning, to encourage you to 
come and to see uh, exactly how you put it on the program um, emerging the emerging students of CBU because uh, it's the reality so the school in CBU is a very small school it's a branch of the university on Minku has a maximum of 25 places study places each year and 15 are paid by the state and the rest is paid by the interested students but uh, we are a small group and we uh, move very easy uh, despite the fact that uh, now um, unfortunately i was reading also a uh, news from today. Sibiu is in the red area from today, from Monday. Everything is closing. So it's not a very nice uh, uh, new news, but uh, anyway, information. But uh, the school has functioned up to today contact, in contact. So probably it's closing now. But anyway, we stay in contact uh, through uh, these means that we use now, so I will run through some, some images and uh, the images will uh, speak uh, by themselves, probably adding some things, but I'd like you to look at these images and um, probably they, they, will, uh, they will show you what uh, our students are going through, uh, mainly on the practical side of the work and this is not the major part of the school so there is an important practical part which is uh, let's say organized by my department department of technical sciences through uh, myself and my colleagues so i'll do the share now and here we are just a moment to adjust and to start the presentation. Okay, so uh, I'm going to run through some uh, works done by and with the students and start with this beginning, 1998, which was the main, I, I can say, a difficult work and quite important for a group of students. Uh, repairing uh, the dam of an old mill near uh, Sibiu and then go through the other pictures. So I'm running through the pictures as I told you. There was everything was happening between these years and there were really skilled students to do this because it was in a village and we needed to do a lot of types of repairs. So it started like this went through like this last days and we got this so coming to something putting together old pieces and new pieces and make it functional uh, another important experience with the village museum because we are happy to work together with the village museum open air museum in Sibiu and the Brukenthal museum specialists so in this case with student, Swedish uh, students, uh, there was a interesting workshop together during actually two years, this was the last one, building three wooden constructions and being helped by three instructors, two Swedish and one Romanian, uh, craftsmen of course, but also instructors. Um, learning from each other, looking how Swed Swed Swedes are doing our working wood and how Romanians are doing it. Uh, again, designing and working with students is also happening here in Dalu Frumos, a place, Schoenberg, a place where uh, uh, our university has a center of um, vernacular studies. It's the name of the let's say, institutional name. Things done by students, understanding and um, 
having a good time do, doing these type of uh, <clears throat> practical works. So again, museum, uh, open air museum, uh, making models. It's important to say even the design department is doing a lot of um, models in studying and preparing their projects which are not necessarily restoration projects or conservation uh, because the school is preparing uh, the first three years uh, students to uh, follow the master program in Bucharest or elsewhere in the world. So running again through their work and trips and one of the trip was to the let's say future hoping future meeting point that we will be ha happy to to know directly and on this way through a place uh, another village where we discovered an old wooden bell a tower which looked like that but with local interest began to be like this and the students were visiting in this state and then we brought it in our school and tried to understand more of it and going on by studying with the specialists what happens with this structure and then thinking of something of how to rebuild it, drawing and coming to exercises and then of course using the help of professionals uh, the master carpenter Attila Varga showing us how to do and of course students trying their own experiences and this is the result but of course is not due to the students activity but a combination where the students were put in contact with it. And coming to Evangelic churches, parallel with my work, I involve the students and I am involving always the students in works that are liable to be done by the students. And in this case, uh, we discuss about the finials of this uh, of the tower, uh, bell tower in Medias, the Evangelic Church, where with the aid of Brukenthal Museum, uh, the work, the quantitative work, uh, was done by the students, and of course uh, the finish was uh, something happy for everybody. And again, on the same tower, there is a character, Turepitz, Germans may know well about it. A person uh, embodied uh, by this or by this sculpture, who was observing from the tower and living in the tower. This is a new sculpture, actually, and it is where you can see it on the right corner, there. But it was in uh, some years ago. The tower went through some repairs, so. It was the opportunity after 1985 moment when this culture was replaced, where the original was replaced, the original is in a museum, and this sculpture was done um, by a local, formerly local uh, Saxon uh, sculpture who uh, did this after you see le left side the original. And, of course, our task was to learn what is to be done with it as long as it was brought in our school where we used to work together with the specialists. And here students get in touch how to clean, how to do the first operations. And, of course, they cannot end this, although this is not exactly a, a piece of a monument, but it can be uh, very important as an and as an object because it's a replica, but it's a piece of art because it's done by um, the media sculpture I was telling you. So 
running through it, learning some operations. But finally, the restorers of the Brukenthal Museum did the job at the end, uh, which is a lot of work helping us to understand more, both restorers, metal and wood, left and right. And here he is on his way back. And of course, instead of conclusions, after a lot of years of working in this uh, way with the students, um, <clears throat> probably are not all the ideas, but some of them, which I consider important of observing uh, this activity and encouraging it, um, I think it's anyway in uh, this method is an infallible, infallible method of communication in architecture education. Essential cooperation that you all know with the institutions and uh, getting in contact with that happens uh, really in the profession with the truth. And of course, some things that happen on the way that you can realize that successful actions results mean cultivating um, generally the motivated, motivated participants and you can observe that in all uh, activities and I think you all uh, have uh, had this opportunity and also the border between possible and impossible is quite volatile uh, it depends on the group it depends on many things and you must control where to stop with the work with students and of course uh, involving them specialists. It's a very delicate border. Uh, so the participants availability for special actions and effort is not constant. Uh, you may know that at the beginning there is a great enthusiasm but at the finish is always a problem and uh, the limits of the method lay in the predictability of actions and the time factor because the time factor comes more and more important and of course there is this paradox that the end of product is quite difficult to reach along the dedicated university schedule which we try to do uh, so introducing in the, the schedule of the, the, the our teaching this type of work is not easy because normally you do it in uh, somewhere uh, in a summer school outside the school but we try to do it in uh, the teaching process. But, of course, fighting with time and some, sometimes not coming to the end. But uh, the evaluation of its ultimate result is essential for the participants. And, uh, of course, uh, at the end of the, for the teaching evolution process. So, to know how to do it better. Integration of hands-on education dedicated to architecture studies is always a challenge for the architectural school curricula. But is always, I, I consider it's both wor uh, but worth doing it. And of course, uh, the final but not least, the hands-on education of a student architects cannot and should not be or become an end for itself. So during the school year, um, mainly what I'm discussing now, but a demonstrative dynamic tool, an alternative, a complementary schooling option. So always can be a schooling option. And to end with an enthusiastic image, uh, I'll show a picture of some students doing uh, this construction um, and of course having a really a good time. It's not a, let's say, a fake image, but I realized looking at this picture afterwards that they, that day they came with these uh, t-shirts and I was not able during the work to read what was on their t-shirts, uh, but you can do it now and <laughs> be surprised as I was myself. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the impression from the students' work. Uh, as you said, hands on <laughs> the, the issue, the problem. That's not always a problem. A technique and stuff like that. Thank you very much. So it's a great overview from different perspectives um, how how to deal with and how to work with uh, monuments or let's say heritage. Okay, um, Mr. Tellman, you are 
our next speaker. Uh, Daniel Tellman, you should be, yes. Yeah, it's, it looks really good. So I see your presentation. Oh. Now you should be able yes, to Yes, I, I can talk mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect, so I, uh, I, I will uh, build upon the presentation uh, Mr. Gligger uh, made. I want to, to, to show to you all the, the way uh, the architect students in, uh, in Timisoara uh, make their uh, diploma uh, work, which is the last big project of uh, six years of study. And uh, I, I, uh, I was really hoping that uh, uh, students of ours uh, can uh, participate in this uh, summer school this summer because one of them uh, had chosen the uh, Fortified Church of Apol to of uh, Apol to uh, uh, investigate in his uh, diploma uh, study. To be short, in Timisoara, we uh, in the in the unit we have three main chapters. The first one is a theoretical one. Uh, which investigates uh, uh, all aspects of the of the subject uh, mainly in written form then we have the second part which i'll show you a so short uh, excerpt of it which is the called the, the pre-diploma which uh, consists in four or five uh, uh, layouts and a smaller written part and then the last part which is the uh, diploma study itself, which uh, goes into detail, investigating uh, uh, all aspects of uh, the, the object and uh, detailing it, uh, taking uh, all considerations from uh, sociological aspects to technical aspects, structural aspects. So I will go uh, shortly through um, the presentation of a, a study made in Absdorf. This is near Apold, where uh, a couple of years ago, a student of ours uh, focused upon uh, the village and its church. Uh, it was earlier a fortified church. Now it uh, is an uh, abandoned church with no congregation. And uh, this is the, the, the structure of the of the second part of the uh, main exam where the student usually locates each aspect of the historical part of the village uh, analyzes uh, touristical opportunities and good practices from uh, uh, other locations uh, in Romania and not only uh, then analyzes the, the village and uh, uh, getting closer to its focus point, uh, searching for a concrete anchor in the, in the uh, subject. And uh, this is why I'm very happy that uh, Sebastian Betke and Victoria Luft uh, are part of the diploma arbeit of uh, uh, Diana Lukacu, which will, which is ongoing and will be finished this summer. So if we we uh, meet together in Apold, uh, I I would really like to 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 show to you what Diana did. Uh, the study uh, usually uh, is separated into stages, where uh, if the diploma arbeit has a concrete partner. In this case, in Apold, uh, that would be the association Casa Apold. Uh, the chemistry and the dialogue between the student which makes his proposal and a certain partner on site uh, can uh, develop itself very 
very nice and uh, strategies can be formed uh, in in steps here we have the first step for for uh, app store where uh, the focus was on uh, on a development uh, inside uh, the village and the second step focuses on the the church itself and uh, has uh, strategies regarding the uh, intervention upon the monument on, on the on the church and then the third step in this case is the proposal to be detailed in the uh, latest part of the of the work and uh, I will jump now to another presentation. This is only for you to understand how how uh, we structure the the final thesis of uh, of our unit. So uh, jumping from Abstorf to Neustadt, where last year uh, Nicoletta Marian made a proposal which. Uh, balanced somehow the natural landscape of the of the area with the anthropic landscape of the village uh, identifying uh, the associations which are active in in the area uh, identifying key points in the village and in the terrain nearby uh, focusing on the landscape now, uh, with the help of uh, the guys from Church Fortress uh, from Mobile, which uh, Vicky uh, represents in this uh, in this meeting, uh, she draw some conclusions uh, on this landscape, which is uh, really astonishing. Uh, there are some uh, very very interesting and beautiful. Uh, uh, landscape formations in the in the surrounding area and uh, the whole uh, area in which uh, Apold also is is practically the second biggest uh, nature 2000 reserve in Romania after the uh, after the Danube Delta and it's very rich in uh, in in, in uh, biodiversity and uh, uh, landscape uh, formations jumping back to the fortified church the fortified church here also has no congregation has a, a bigger uh, built area with uh, the community center with the former school the church itself and with some uh, remains of a earlier construction making uh, two steps in the in the approach the student had uh, the focus on the community center the church tower and uh, this uh, uh, abandoned structure leaving the church itself aside because it's uh, a, a delicate issue as uh, sebastian also pointed out it's uh, pretty difficult to propose a new function for the for the churches uh, due to the fact that uh, the community uh, in Germany, the, the uh, diaspora, as uh, uh, Sebastian called uh, it, uh, has, uh, let's say, mixed feelings about the uses of the church. Uh, after documenting very well and searching through archives, uh, the student uh, uh, then goes through uh, historical analysis and uh, uh, builds its argumentation uh, towards the uh, next step, which in this case uh, was uh, driven by the need of uh, uh, the association uh, nearby from Mobile, uh, the need uh, to, to exploit this beautiful landscape nearby and uh, to derive from it uh, uh, let's say uh, products. In this case, uh, the proposal was to accommodate inside the, inside the uh, church courtyard, uh, small factory for uh, 
making paper, which is reversible, built upon the uh, a wooden structure, and then uh, uh, which is uh, let's say adequate as a as an insertion. It isn't, uh, from my point of view, uh, conquering the the uh, whole courtyard. This would be uh, regarded as the first phase of intervention. The second phase uh, is focused on the tower, which was uh, regarded as a uh, Belvedere point. Also, usually taking into account the history of the of the of the building and uh, making uh, analysis of uh, certain. Uh, let's say, uh, good and bad practices during the time of, uh, of the monument. Uh, we usually go into, into details uh, of uh, structural uh, approaches in uh, the conservation process. And uh, uh, these are also quoted and uh, noted in the, in the final exam. In uh, Nicoletta's proposal, the second step was uh, integrating the needs of the uh, local uh, uh, society. Uh, there are uh, some issues with the elderly people in, in the area, and she uh, proposed, uh, after analyzing the school uh, body, the, the school construction, uh, to transform it into a, a home for the elderly people. Uh, which was also uh, treated as such. And uh, in the final step, she had a, a proposal regarding the tower itself, uh, repurposing its function from bell tower to, uh, uh, to a Belvedere point. So this is, this is the, the, the final uh, thesis of Nicoletta Marianne. Uh, in this way, we uh, treat uh, uh, this type of subjects in our in our unit, and perhaps this is also the way uh, uh, Diana Lucaccio will treat uh, the church of uh, the fortified church of Apold with the help of uh, Sebastian and uh, Vicky. In uh, in the second part, I will go through another uh project of uh, reconversion uh which is near apold is the church of daya where uh, also uh, another student had gone through uh, the part of the history of the village identifying uh, the, the the needs of the community daya is uh, a very rich village uh, populated uh, with Romanians and Roma now. The German, uh, the Saxon community is almost absent. I think there are all one or two Saxons left in the village. The, the village is very rich and has a very uh, 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 ample uh, uh, production capability of milk and milk products. Uh, so there are uh, a lot of uh, gathering facilities for the for the milk, and uh, in in the in the landscape, uh, the the village is is relevant also for uh, providing uh, goods from uh, uh, from the field as uh, medicinal plants and uh, uh, sheep wool and uh, sheep milk. These opportunities, uh, Mihai Abdelian uh, uh, wanted to focus around the, 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 the fortified church due to the fact that it doesn't have on, uh, any uh, congregation now. And uh, on site, uh, the association uh, tree, uh, Trey Braz, uh, provided a uh, discussion partner regarding the needs of the project. Uh, the same as in the example before, we usually do, do the uh, historical analysis, uh, 
uh, and uh, make steps for the project so that it can fit the needs of the partner locally and then develop further and uh, fit the needs of the school, let's say. Uh, the proposal is uh, then weighted towards uh, its validity, uh, testing the examples of good practice from the areas. And uh, here we have examples from Alma B, which is a very nice uh, project uh, uh, driven by the Mihai Minescu Trust. And also in other parts, examples of uh, uh, repurposing uh, churches. In this, in this uh, case, uh, we went on site and met with Sebastian and uh, uh, discussed uh, uh, opportunities for Daya and opportunities also for, for uh, Uphold. Uh, we talked with uh, uh, specialists and uh, historians and uh, also uh, actors uh, involved in uh, the, the whole uh, restoration projects and uh, uh, opportunities of this kind from the, from the uh, Daya region. After making a strategic keystone map, we uh, arrived to a certain approach which was split in three, the main focus remaining the, the, the church, the whole splitting uh, having a sense in making the approach more easily for the, for the student and giving the whole uh, concept uh, uh, weight and credibility. Uh, we usually try to build upon uh, projects and uh, uh, investigations made uh, 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 further on. Uh, this is uh, the example from uh, uh, landscape, a uh, landscape initiative, which uh, uh, came from München, based upon Daya. Uh, the church itself is, the, is then analyzed from a statical point of view and uh, uh, statical uh, uh, professors from our school give feedback to, to our students and uh, try to, to integrate as much as possible different kind of specialities into the, into the project. Uh, and this is why uh, I think uh, the collaboration in, in the summer school is very rewarding for each architecture students which, who takes part because different perspectives are very, very imp important to, to understand how uh, a complex project can, uh, can be born and come to light. So after taking the structural analysis into account, there's also a mapping of uh, the problems of the of the monument in different types, regardless if it is built or uh, part of the of the furniture. Uh, I'm sure all of our students are very keen to to talk to specialists regarding. Uh, uh, all the plaster and the uh, decorations inside uh, the old church. And uh, afterwards, the, the deriving, the, the, the outcome is, uh, in this case, a refunctioning of the whole church, which implies the loss of the sacred part, um, which is a, <laughs> <laughs> a difficult uh, choice. I'm, I'm very interested to see how uh, our student will solve this problem in, in Uphold. Uh, each part of the, of the study uh, goes into as much detail as possible so that uh, in the end, going from buildings to outer walls to problems with vegetation and uh, uh, water draining, uh, going through uh, 
appropriate uh, plastering solutions. Uh, the whole ensemble can be regarded as a project and can be graded as such in the case of our, our final exam. Uh, only to, to, to summarize the, at the end, the proposal Mihai Adelian made in Daya is uh, easily understood here in this site plan. He uh, proposed a multifunctional space inside the church. He uh, proposed a, a shop for the local uh, local goods derived from Daya, and not only, but also from the from the regions uh, hosted by the fortified uh, uh, barn house, and a new uh, a new structure, which is a, a reversible one, which is hosted by the former. Uh, barn house uh, on the on the western side he envisioned different scenarios of usage for this uh, uh, ensemble which uh, can accommodate branches which are very very popular in uh, in rural uh, transylvania and not only uh, then uh, a marketplace which is connected also with the church and with the with the new with the new uh, building, and uh, the whole the whole uh, intervention should be fitted for this type of uh, church fortified church without any congregation. I'll uh, keep it in this way uh, only to show you in Absdorf the uh, the intervention we usually do on uh, on our practicum this is a concept we made five years ago for a museum for historical tiles the concept then uh, developed during a summer school. And uh, together with the uh, Timisoara students, we started building the uh, whole museum out of uh, handmade bricks in the uh, village of Aposh. Nearby is the, the, the kiln, which make the bricks, one of the last uh, or only uh, handmade uh, brick and tile kiln in uh, southern Transylvania. And together during the five years, we managed to uh, learn together with the students how to work with uh, stone, brick, lime mortar, and uh, wood, uh, raising their uh, awareness towards uh the, the the traditional way of uh of building with this type of of materials it is uh very rewarding and each team who uh took place into uh, these exercises came back uh, as leave you said with a smile on their face seeing their uh progress growing each year so from my part, uh, this is the, the, the presentation I wanted to show you. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to coming to Apold and uh, I'm looking forward to collaborating with Sebastian and with Vicky uh, together with Diana to uh, see how the diploma work comes out this year on a church which, ha which has uh, 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 interesting partnership between Casa Apold, uh, the church itself, which has a, a, a priest which is open to changes. And uh, yeah, hopefully COVID will lead us. Thank you very much.
Multumask. I was I written there, it. so I, <laughs> I take it over. Um, one question: the The museum is 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 already finished uh, or not? No, it it. I think it lacks perhaps twenty or thirty rows. Uh, the images you saw, the last ones were from last year. Uh, this year we managed to go further, and uh, I hope we will finish it uh, in the year to come. Quite interesting space. So, <laughs> um, okay, thank you very much. Um, as a last point on our list today, uh, Victoria Luft will give us an impression from Mobile. Hopefully, I uh, speak it correctly uh you say yes just a second i have to free your <laughs> audio so now you should be able to talk to us hello okay so i will also give you a short presentation first and then maybe we have a look at a little um, drone film from the fortress because unfortunately it was not possible for me to film it <laughs> Um, okay, I have to share the screen. Everyone sees it? Yes. Okay. So, um, as I said, I'm a landscape architect and city planner, and I have an association with um, 25 friends. We came here first 2015 in this area. And we actually are architects from different countries. So from Germany, from Slovenia, from Austria, from Romania, from Great Britain as well. And so where we are based is, um, you saw already Apol today, also Daya and Neustadt, where Daniel just show, showed the co concept and our village, where our association is set this year, Mobile. This is the village, also a tiny dead end village. And um, yeah, this is the um, historical drawing of the fortress, how it used to be with three towers. Um, unfortunately, one collapsed, this one. And this is how it looks today. So um, only these two towers are left. Um, the Bacon Tower was um, short before are in really bad condition when we came, but they now they restored it also with the help of the foundation of the um, fortified churches and some craftsmen. And this one was restored by the um, Saxon um, Hauge, unfortunately not with a really nice roof. Um, you see here the parish house. So um, they took some parts down from the fortification and built this parish house later. And yeah, the fortress is on a hill. So Mobile is called Hill and Hundert is 100 hills. You will see later why this village is called like this. Um, for our association, um, we work in different fields. So we work in restoration. Um, more our focus is on education and workshops. We decided to do some um, village and landscape development and also some Map, mapping and making future concepts for reuse of the churches. Just want to show you like one project per field so that it's not getting too long. So for the restoration, for example, we want to um, fix um, a part of the ring wall that collapsed and it was basically two weeks of work for five students and volunteers. And for these workshops, we always ask local experts to show us, explain us, and um, so that we not do anything bad to this monument. Um, yeah, here we, this is how it looked after we rebuilt it. And this year, for example, this is our association house. So it's not only work on the fortress, but also in our association house, which we rented from the church. And for example, this year we fixed the gate, also with some local experts, as you can maybe see here, that is Sebastian Bethke helping us. And yeah, actually every year we do a few of these workshops and um, ask volunteers from not only Romania, but also um, our association in all countries that we have friends of to 
to help us and support us. And then the other thing is the village and landscape development. We try to um, support some local products and also um, do some events so that people can sell their products and um, make some money by um, cooking or anything like this. And another thing is the preservation of the cultural landscape. So um, Mobile 100 Vision has a very special landscape. You can see here why it is like this, like it's these hundred hills. And yeah, at the moment in Romania, there's a lot of um, happening regarding um, land grabbing. So big investors buy all the land and then try to work it in a not really nice and sustainable way. So at the moment we try to um, manage that these these hills or this special landscape become like a natural mon monument. Then we do um, workshops at least one every year for students. Uh, this year was different, of, of course, but um, these pictures show a drawing workshop for landscape analysis that we did also with international students. And um, yeah, some of my friends from the association taught how to draw and to analyze the landscape, to understand and read the landscape. And um, yeah, then the, the fourth um, thing that we try to do is mapping. There's a lot of need for mapping in the whole of Transylvania and also work on further concepts. So here we try to make a map of, map the whole walls and also the, like actually all the free spaces also the trees, we try to um, find out what all breeds they are or what kind of, of apple trees and to um, cut them and do a good maintenance for all these free spaces as well. Um, we try to analyze some um, visual access. We, together with the Fortify Church um, Foundation, we did apply for some fundings. And therefore, we did some analysis and also developed a methodology how to analyze landscape in general. And yeah, we use this um, concept. At the moment, we work together with Sebastian in um, Apold and also try to think about some what to do with this church. So, and now I will try to show you a little um, movie. Um, done by uh, a filmmaker here just recently from our church and so you get a little impression how it do you see the screen the movie yeah yes okay. so the, the the traffic the connection the internet connection would be the best so we, let, let's see if it works but um yeah let's see okay just to give you a short impression maybe you can also add that Could you comment, maybe? Or yeah, I can. Um, yeah, you see the, the fortress with the two towers here, and you see the little backing tower in front. This is the port tower. In the back, you see the hills. And um, so the fortress was actually built on one of those also hills. And um, yeah, it's really special um, for us as landscape architects. We choose this village because it has such a special landscape, like a unique landscape. and. There's the collapse tower, you see it here in the back a bit, and the uh, um, parish house. And it's special because it has these two towers. Not many of these fortified churches have two towers. It's something special about this fortress. And yeah, last year also um, some money was raised to, um, to re not restore, but make this tower accessible again so people can safely go up and have a look, which is important for tourists. So if you show it to visitors. And in the little tower, we put a little museum or it's a place for exhibitions. At the moment, we try to check um, as well if we can put some accommodation in the fortress together with the um, 
conduct uh, um, this LEP. And yeah, I think you, everyone can see that each of these fortresses has a really unique charm and looks very different. And yeah, that's it. A little walk. Okay, so this was my part. I was lost. Thanks a lot for the impression from the village of hundred uh, uh, hundred little hills. one hundred hills. But it's a you said unique, but it's a it's a natural landscape. Yeah, it's not the result of coal mining or something like that or volcany or uh, something. I don't know. What's the reason? So now you are ah. Uh, Again, just a second. So you should be able to talk again. Okay. Um, yes, not 100% sure where they come from. They say it's from, um, what, how to say this in, in English, um, from slipping, like the soil slipped down and of, it's an erosion process, so to say. And there are some layers in the soil that are like, um, not like where, where the soil is floating on and then it's erosion. But no one knows exactly. Yeah, of course but yeah, this is why we have to protect it because actually, um, this year a guy bought four of them and wants to take them down in spring. So we have to do something against this. So it's a treasure hunter, I think, a crazy treasure hunter. Okay, <laughs> but it's, it could be maybe really useful to have a kind of myth. Let's say, yeah, yeah if, if everything is is clear. Giant, I mean, giant to, myth. Mm -hmm. We'll put them there, but thank you very much. So yeah, we come to an end of our uh, program today with the uh, this uh, nice pictures, the impressions from uh, Movile. Um, yeah, what do you want? Um, five minutes break and then meet again for kind of discussion or let's do it now i don't know what's what's your need coffee now or just a break for restroom however what what do you need i will ask uh, just a second i will open the um yeah now you should be able to talk to me no aren't you uh no okay somebody is writing me maybe okay. we, we could continue the discussion yeah to start the okay. discussion because if we make a break now so okay i believe we are out of the Agreed. loop in okay 10, okay 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 then uh, let's take the opportunity the uh, chance um um are there any questions uh, for content understanding misunderstanding uh, something like that. I think I only can open the access to audio for each of you, not all, for all of you. So, but you can do it by yourself, maybe, um, because as you showed it, uh, Mr. Zalewski, it works. So, talk to our presenters or to us. You want to ask something? The first question: Are there any questions? Uh -huh. Again, um, Mr. Zalewski, where are you? Okay, just I need another kind of... Um, uh, the structure here seems to be complicated. So I can... Okay. Ah, so you open it by yourself, okay. Mm -hmm. It seems to work. Mm. So I... I um, would say thank you very much for a wonderful presentation, especially for the presentation coming from Romania. I was really very pleased to see uh, this very, very well-structured uh, approach um, on the side of the Fortified Churches Foundation. Thank you, Ramona uh, Lachko. It was, uh, I think, very important way to highlight also the necessity 
uh, to work and to regard the perspectives of the users and to start or, or to create the methodology, how to create the debates between the local communities, the stakeholders at the central level, local level, and uh, something which seems to me also very Im important in all this process. We are, we are all uh, specialists. We are all specialists and um, very well, very familiar with uh, with our trade. But um, something we we are we are a specialist at the end of the chain of uh, of the development of all these processes. And uh, uh, something which would be very necessary would be also uh, an awareness in ourselves that we have to connect ourselves with uh, with the politics and to understand a little bit more how the dialogues or uh, processes of, of decision made, ma making in the politics work. Uh, and therefore, I saw uh, a kind of approach to these uh, themes in your presentation. It was really, uh, I think, very important for all of us. And um, I found also very interesting this holistic way uh, shown by Daniel Tellman, this holistic way of the development of um, uh, of the master th thesis or diploma, starting with the regarding of cultural landscape and um, also viewing what are the possibilities on spot and uh, trying to develop uh, reuses or models of reuse uh, regarding the local uh, local potentials potentials. And I my question to to your bot, uh, <clears throat> Mister. <coughs> Mr. Gligor and Mr. Telman, um, how do you manage with the necessity, or maybe you don't have any necessity to uh, to assure your students with insurances? Because this is the in Germany the key question. If uh, we go to the to an excursion, um, <clears throat> how we deal with the question of potential accidents or with uh, insurances? We have. We have right now in Frankfurt um, <clears throat> a dean which is very obsessive with this kind of questions. So it's really something which uh, doesn't allow me to sleep. And so therefore my, <laughs> my first question to this uh, very trivial issue. The insurance for students uh, who work outside, outdoors and uh, on the site, on the construction site. Uh, if I may answer, um, officially through the school, if uh, we do such works somewhere outside, um, there is, I don't know, it's fortunately or unfortunately, there is not so much scare about this and not uh, regulation, perfect regulation or insurance. But of course, uh, that doesn't uh, stop us to take care and to, so ma mainly uh, as a teacher, you're responsible of what is happening. And of course, mm -hmm. it's your first responsibility. So um, it, it's, it's functioning mainly in the way it's organized. And of course, in the way students are um, accommodating uh, the work they have to do uh, and the rules on the building site, uh, of course, as you uh, as you have you have seen, um, the works are not so it, mainly what the students are, uh, let's say, um, encouraged to do um, are not building complex building uh, uh, works that uh, mean scaffoldings or I don't know special uh, or. Um, I know well-known dangers that on a real building site happen. Of course, we do a lot of visits, and uh, one of my because I'm, I'm teaching uh, a short one semester of history of techniques, building techniques, and I always go with the students in in the in the roof of the of the main churches in Sibiu and show them the wooden structures and comment on them and so on. But um, I think. This remains a, a, risk, a risk that you must take as a teacher, but 
again, no um, inf enforced regulations for for this, just self-protection and attention. And if you do it um, uh, in a, um, let's say, uh, rhythmical way and you repeat these actions and so on, the students get also acquainted with what they have to do, how, what to take care, and of course, uh, that that becomes a habit. So I think it's part of the profession also. Mm -hmm. So that's the answer. In, in Timisoara, it's almost the same. We we try now for this year to uh, incorporate uh, uh, safety training for uh, uh, from the from the whole university towards the students who take take uh, practical courses and uh, make practical uh, works in summer schools, for instance. Uh, in the summer schools uh, we organized in, in Zimburgen, uh, we had each year this kind of trainings. But since uh, traditional works are not very uh, uh, compliant with power tools, the risks are uh, smaller. So you can get lime in your eyes but uh, that's almost it, all, all of it. Further questions, practical questions. Ah, I have. You want to talk? Okay, because, uh, okay, you first, afterwards, Mechtel uh, Minor. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> I would like to connect uh, with uh, with the short uh, summary of uh, Professor Zalewski and say that uh, like at, at, like at the end of this uh, workshop, uh, I think uh, I'm, the, the, I'm very happy because I'm reassured <laughs> that we are on the right path we, with the program that we are starting to uh, develop in the um, in the foundation, and that I realize that there is this missing link between the hands-on and uh, plans at university levels, at uh, associations, foundation level, and at funding and policy level. And I think uh, we have found our niche <laughs> as, as a foundation to, to fulfill that uh, missing uh, link. And uh, in the future, it's, uh, it's essential for, for the foundation to work closer together with, uh, with universities and with uh, grassroots initiatives that are happening already and pull these together and try to connect them to, to the macro level which I tried to, to present uh, today. And, uh, and I also like uh, Mechtil, uh, you, I, I really appreciated your uh, presentation because it went into more detail on the actual uh, process and models, uh, management models, decision-making uh, models, and I think uh, it's something that we can uh, exchange uh, further on uh, in the gaining more experience in this, because, yes, we, we are learning about these processes at this stage. So thank you. Yeah, just... Yeah. So, uh, he, and I want to continue uh, Ramonia's uh, contribution. Um, yes, I think today we presented all of us uh, pieces of our work that could fit together. And in order to make them better fit together, to, in order to, um, to be well prepared for the next summer school, if it will be happen that we can meet together. I would ask if we could have a short summaries from each participant, uh, if you are willing to, or who is willing, if we could just share some ideas and look how we could maybe in, in preparation for the summer school uh, could interact or could think together, uh, not just have a lecture and then the next lecture and the practice in, in between, but maybe to have two uh, colleagues connected or to have a dialogue or so. That would, would be a small vision, I, I would say, in, in order to, to meet. I mean, I'm looking forward to see you all there because I'm so happy with the day uh, with the program today and I'm really uh, 
thanking. I thank the organizers. I thank all the participants. It was really inspiring today. And I would like to, to read something um, afterwards uh, to, to um, digest <laughs> and uh, to exchange just. It's, it's more than the summer school. It's just inspiring to meet colleagues uh, and, and to, to, uh, to exchange ideas and methods also from the first to the last contribution. I'm very happy to have heard it. Thank, Thank you very much for your, for your words. And uh, maybe it's a kind of task for us to think about it, how we can uh, stick together for the next month till the summer school will happen in, yeah, we will see uh, on Doodle July, August, uh, and uh, maybe find an opportunity to, 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 glue or to stick together in somehow um, we will see um the the recorded version of of our today's meeting here will be on youtube the next day so it's one <laughs> one thing maybe to uh to to follow or to to uh to mm -hmm. see what we talked about and so on so and okay, uh, okay. and we, we created this program as one um idea maybe we'll find another solution to to come together again let's see yeah um okay thank you very much um much more <laughs> uh, words to say or not so i see many people without camera doesn't matter as you want um maybe i'd like to add something or ask i don't know kind of impression especially uh, from the last uh two or three presentations, two presentations, especially um, when we get the opportunity to, to have a look on this uh, diploma thesis, um, but for, from Mobile as, as well, um, one factor, the local people, the local community, because it always sounds so good. If you apply for money, you write in your paper and we want to talk with the people uh, from the village and they will be happy because of our cool project and now we need money. So, but how to get in contact and how to really involve people in, in, into a heritage project. So, um, I mean, it's kind of question or thing, um, but yeah, sometimes I was thinking about it um, um, and, especially in, in, in a practical way, how to take the people with you. Um, if you want to say something out of your practice, maybe could be useful for all the others here, or for me, of course, because I'm asking. <laughs> no? like, I, I think uh, uh, Victoria can speak for this better than I. I, I with our students, I, I'm trying to, to involve as much as possible external aspects, external from the architecture point of view, not focusing only on the on the building, but involving other specialities. And of course, the, the social aspects are very important. And the, the main step we, we are focusing in, in our uh, department is to uh, address uh, situations where you ha can have a partner. Uh, to talk with and to relate to and to derive from it his uh, uh, opinion uh, uh, ways of thinking and needs so that you uh, don't make a, a project which cannot find uh, ground and cannot uh, relate to nothing only to to your uh, uh, imagination uh, but uh, I think uh, the, the work with the people uh, on site is uh, more your uh, <laughs> department, uh, Victoria. You are much more connected than we from Timisoara. Yeah, I, I think the first and already a really important step is just that these fortresses get open a bit because normally the people from the village were not allowed to enter. Even when we came to Mobile, none of the kids has been on the tower. And imagine you have such a thing in your village and you never ever entered, entered the tower before. So 
of course now that when these associations act in the villages and it's happening in a lot of villages um the whole the whole structure opens a bit and of course the people get like curious what's happening there what are these people doing and then of course you can always um, um connect with the people for example if you do um events and and they just join or they get some money for cooking or they they um, sell some of their products there and um yeah that's what we try of course you you cannot expect them to volunteer and work all these things because they have enough to do in their daily life and they're not really interested in this most of them i mean there are always exceptions but um i mean in general especially in the small villages the people are happy if something is going on and um, and to join and, and give ideas. And also we really wanted to do like um, a workshop with the people from our village this summer, but unfortunately this all didn't happen this year to really ask them what would they see as futures? Because now we always ask these academic people or students and stuff to envision what would be the right um, reuse of the church. And I guess there would be really, really different um, suggestions coming from the people that actually live there. And I mean, still, I would say some of them have never entered um, in, in the fortress yet, because neither they don't care or they are still, it's still this thing between the old Saxon um, culture that they, they don't think that they are welcome. and. Yeah, this is already a big shift if, if you start to work on this. And there are diverse opportunities to include the people. But yeah, you should not expect them that they volunteer with you like and, and help you. They do. And sometimes also you, you, you pay them if they help us with stuff. They deliver us scent. They deliver us wood. They, 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 they always help us, of course, with some things. But um, yeah. And it's improving every year. It's also trust building, a lot of trust building. Thank you. Yeah, Ruth Istvan. Istvan, yeah, hopefully I pronounce this correctly. Uh, but we can't hear you. I can hear you, but you are should be able to talk because there's no sign. But maybe something is wrong with your computer, not with mine. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> I'm really interested in your opinion. <laughs> no, <laughs> at the end of our session. And uh, now, okay, try it again. Mm -mm. No. Uh, what's wrong? I don't know. Mm. The others, can you hear? Ruth Istvan, as well not? Ah. Hmm. <laughs> What should I do? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but uh, thanks a lot for your for your words, um, Victoria. My, it could be so easy. Yeah? Let the people in well, as, as a first step. Um, why not? And and um, then all the more much more complicated things uh, will follow. Um, so, but to do a workshop and ask the people what they want. I mean, yeah, also could be it's. It sounds easy, but uh, you are talking about the, the academic people or the academic world. I think it's much more uh, common to ask their own colleagues than the people uh, they are uh, involved at the place where our, um, let's say, monument or the heritage uh, is, is located. Um, yeah. Hello. Yeah, yeah now it works. Yeah. Ah, okay. You are back. Nice. Cool. What do you Great. want to say? Thank you, thank you. So uh, first of all, thank you very much for this uh, very interesting day and all these interesting presentations. Um, um, I wanted to say something to the community topic because you asked that, Tim, earlier. Um, we uh, had yesterday a very interesting uh, conference on the topic of community and dialogue. And um, I had to kind of uh, state that here in Transylvania, we have a really interesting mix of different communities that are involved in these processes. So besides the local community that Vicky spoke about now, we have the um, Saxon community, 
the Saxon community is still living here and the Saxon community that's living abroad. We have um, heritage interested communities. So communities that are um, wanting to get involved and having to get into a dialogue with these other communities. So it's a quite a challenge. And um, it's, uh, I think it's something that needs to be also analyzed a bit further and where we have to bring people to the table and encourage this dialogue and make sure that we get the most out of uh, mutual interests that we find. This is what I wanted to say to the topic of communities. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. I think it's a, a special thing that's not so uh, known or common, especially from a German, let's say a German, I mean, at all a perspective, yeah, to, to, to think in such a kind of different uh, communities or people, yeah, by different religion, by different origin and so on, yeah, in, in one region and traditionally located there. Sebastian, maybe you are will be the last speaker, could be, what do I want to say? <laughs> yeah. Okay, hey, I, I say also something to the community stuff, uh, as a community uh, building, <laughs> uh, because Ruth said, uh, yeah, it's a local, um, I agree, it's a local community, and then all the others, uh, former inhabitants, uh, new inhabitants, uh, the, pro the major problem is that the local community not speaking in one voice, it's not like um, an, an homogeneous community, what it's actually not so bad. It's uh, um, so I, you can hear me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so the local community, it's uh, uh, ethnic groups, uh, religious groups, um, the society, the social society in the village, it's very uh, different. Um, um, you have uh, huge landowners, you have uh, um, yeah, um, daily workers. Um, you have analphabets, you have um, very different uh, different groups, and you don't have actually a, a common village community who you just address and say, okay, let's, uh, let's do something here in the sex and culture heritage. So you have to first form a village community who is speaking, let's say, have a common issue to saving the culture heritage, what it's not belongs to them, uh, it's a big task um, and uh, the one way it's of course through children. The children uh, of a village have uh, no borders in the head, they don't have history so much. So for them a uh, fortified church is a big playground uh, to discover and if something has happened uh, uh, it's very nice. So I think this is uh, one, 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 one approach. So let's start with children workshops. So <laughs> less history, more future. Uh -huh. Mr. Zalewski. Mm -hmm. uh, this community topic, it seems really to be very, very interesting and very important, uh, especially after uh, Sebastian Betke uh, said this, um, the divisions between the communities, inhomogeneous communities and pictures and wishes in, in, the, in the head. And um, we have to keep in mind that the uh, policy nowadays, also the policy addressed or created by the European Commission is something which, is, which runs according to the principles of governance. Uh, that means that um, politicians uh, are uh, in search of um, a medium to uh, continue a kind of dialogue with, with local societies. This dialogue cannot be uh, made or cannot be provided on a very high level of the uh, planning processes in the, in the shaping of the whole country because it, uh, um, it needs a very highly specialized expertise, this process can be applied in a really in the, in the small scale, in the scale of the community. Therefore, it's also for the uh, policy makers so important to find any themes, any subject to put the money to this and to try to maybe to um, um, create a lobby or supporters or I don't know. Uh, therefore, these questions, uh, how the community works, 
uh, it uh, should be uh, in any way uh, present in the, in the program of the of the summer school. I would propose that uh, that we also look maybe for one social scientist uh, anywhere on on universities in Romania who has a little bit um, experience with um, uh, with. Um, um, empirical studies of the communities and who can give a kind of overview how to approach to this all really challenges uh, with this inhomogeneous um, um, groups on spot. Okay, half past two, we are exactly in time. Yes. <laughs> and uh, so hopefully uh, all of you enjoyed the day and will enjoy the afternoon um, but I think that would be the point to let's say to make a cut <laughs> to to bring it to an end our meeting today thanks a lot for your attention your participation I mean more than 30 people uh, at all were here or are here Today, I think it's a, well, it's a small success or a great success, let's, let's say, for us and our plans. And um, as I told you, um, um, we recorded the meeting and I will put it on uh, YouTube and send you the link. And yeah, how to keep in contact, how to keep in touch till the summer school, we will see. Yeah, it was uh, a, a kind of try. We tried it out, so it worked. And um, with the kind of puzzle of impressions of, of, of in our presentations, more focused on technical stuff, more focused on social questions, architectural questions. So I think it was a kind of, of colorful uh, overview, um, how to work on cultural heritage, especially focused on fortified churches in Romania, Transylvania, Zimbabwe. I would say for me, uh, many new impressions, but I'm not an architect, uh, but I'm a, a postgraduate student and uh, like the most of you students. And um, in that way, thanks a lot to our presenters uh, to give us, uh, you gave us your time today and and teach and, and uh, gave us the opportunity to, to yeah, take part in your that's expertise, knowledge, and yeah, hopefully we learned. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks a lot. And if not, somebody want to add something, um, of course you can write us, please, uh, uh, to the our partners, uh, the Doodle, so that we can point out when next year we will meet. Um, before Christmas, I think we should know, or earlier, maybe next days to plan better next year. But as I got it, for you, it's important to plan the next years because there are many things to organize, uh, um, appointments and so on. And for us as well, to the same, let's say, problem to, to plan the summertime. Okay, yes. Sonia, Sebastian, you want to add something? Last words from the organization team? Thank you for everyone. Uh, because uh, I have a feeling that uh, everything uh, it's around uh, me or my up this uphold place. <laughs> um, nice that uh, you're joining uh, and helping uh, not just uphold but also the, the region to be more uh, recognized and uh, yeah, just that you're occupied with this. It's a, it's a good feeling that we are, like with Vicky, uh, on the ground, uh, we are uh, not alone. Uh, here, what I lost. <clears throat> thank you. I can thank you. Say thank you too, and I hope we will see us the next year in Apollo. <laughs>